How's it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of Collected Editions, and I'm going to go ahead and let my panel introduce themselves. To my right, who's that guy? Peace. The adorable Omni Dog. You're the one that called me adorable. Thank you so much, Omar. That's everybody is, is so entitled much. to one mistake every year. <laughs> uh, yes, that is Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault. Everybody, and to his right, his faithful dupe. Yeah. Peace You're and love. Wanted. Thank you there for having a, me on. Absolutely. There was a tw uh, a, a, a twit, uh, tweet, is that what it's called, from Twitter that went viral about a little girl that missed out on dupe, and she was asking if anybody had an extra dupe. And I like to think that this old man ripped it out of her hands. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the way I think of Omni Dog. Uh, <laughs> even Mike Allred had to order his own, so take it easy. All right. Ooh, and name drop of the day. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, and I, yeah, and I noticed Jake's in Reddit going, The greatest day of my life was when I interviewed Mike Allred. And I'm like, Who the hell interviewed Mike that Allred? Is the, I did. <laughs> that is a great way to reframe that story for me sending you a message of people saying nice things about you to brighten your day to just make it like I'm glory hunting. I'm not in the mood for love today, Jake. I'm when did Dom get a beard? Day. When did you get a beard, Dom? You growing a beard, buddy? <laughs> hey, uh, how is uh uh here uh you two can fight later uh <laughs> below me is dom of x introduce yourself buddy hello. hello dom of x youtube channel by the same name content creator by the same name i am the assistant editor of comicreleases.com your one-stop shop for all of your notation for solicitations and for collected edition release dates i'm also the project intern for near mint condition as if you guys already didn't know so thank you omar <laughs> Uh, for having me here today. Absolutely, buddy. Wow, you've got that memorized. That's really, I, I need to give you a pitch just like Chris got you ready to talk about comic releases. That was really good. <laughs> Your one-stop shop. I like that. Oh, okay. I need to write something up. Let me get on chap GPT. Uh, and to his right, it's kid. I believe somebody else owns that trademark, but go ahead. Kid no, I it, it, was, it, was, it was available. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I'm Jake from the Brave and the Boys. I have a YouTube channel. We are, we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram, all the social medias, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you for being here. Um, wait, Omar takes inter. I do. I, I take them all. I'll take them all. Uh, I am wearing glasses. Yeah, my eye eyesight was bothering me a little bit, and I don't want to mess this up. And I have a live stream later on, so I want to make sure I'm ready to go. Why are you not fighting during the introduction? Why are we not always fighting during the introduction? Uh, good morning. And how is everybody doing? I hear the comic releases Patreon page has a watch list feature to help you keep track of all your future purchases. Wow. Is that true? Oh, no, very. That is very true. We do hold a Patreon. It's not much to also support us. It helps me and Chris keep the site rolling. And yeah, for measly two bucks a month, you get a watch list, which you can add uh, consistent titles. I'm always updating the site. So if you guys want to keep a good track of all your books, be sure to stop by and check us out. Nice. There you go. Did DC finally restaff their collected editions department? Uh, from the lack of emails I've been getting, I'm going to go ahead and say no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, at least it seems like things are going in the right direction. They're running out of things to reprint, and now it's time to focus on books that people really want. So I do want to stress that this is an early look at what would be the El Device uh, catalog, which is where DC has been putting their books for the last, oh my goodness, it's been years since they've been do, using that catalog. That should be finished here in about a week or two. Sometimes they run a little bit late because we need to start working on the next catalog. And I, I, we, we've, we've had Marvel's catalog already finished with all the trades and the Omnis, and DC is usually running about a month after that. So I want to say here in the next week or so, because I'll, I would love to go back and have the the same uh, group of people join me for that and just look at the whole L device catalog because the last time we did it was I think in August of 2024. Nope, that's this year, 2023, 2023. So yeah, it'd be fun to do that and see what else sneaks in there because so again, this isn't everything. We've already announced some things that will be in the catalog, such as the. Brother Lono Deluxe Edition, and books like that. But there are some nice surprises. 
Um, hey, what's up, Omni Nation? How are you, buddy? Hey, day. What hey, up, day. dude? This catalog gives me hope. Super excited to see you guys talk about it. Yeah, there is things we need to talk about. There are things to talk about. And a big thank you to Dom for putting... Not only did he make the thumbnail, but he put this amazing presentation together. So if there is a misspelling or something is wrong, you can yell at him. Do not come yelling. <laughs> That's why. So, see, I give shout outs, but they're proper shout outs. Uh, all right. Here, let me get to the bottom in case I make a comment. All right, here we go. We're kicking it off with press this is a trade paperback collecting the first six issues and material from Catwoman election night number one and DC sneak peek. Look, he even wrote who wrote it. And who yeah. the is. Um, Mark Russell. Has, has anybody read the series? It's really good. It's, about? it's great satire. And it's... How do I describe it? Man, that, I read this freaking seven years ago. Uh, I read it on DC, the DC app. It's just DC. <clears throat> typical great Mark Russell, Mark Russell social satire. Okay, so is it set in the DC universe? Because I was wondering why Catwoman Election Night is there. Kind of. Okay, I didn't know if it was like a. It doesn't say DC Black Label. I was just curious. Um, it's okay. about a teenager who serves as president of the United States. So far, <laughs> it's fun. They're giving a teenager. Well, I guess you know what. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Uh, Justice League, the world's greatest superhero. So not only is DC reprinting this in an absolute edition, uh, but they're also coming out with a trade paperback edition that's $29.99 for the people that like trade paperbacks and also love Alex Ross artwork. Uh, Paul Dini writing some of the stories, and some of these stories are phenomenal. Have you all read all of these or any oh, of these? Yeah, yeah. I love these ones. Shazam one is fantastic. I was going to say, what's your favorite one out of the, out of the ones uh, here? Shazam has the overall story, but Batman has my favorite like image from it, like my favorite panel from it. Yeah, I I, Peace on Earth is my favorite from. Here. I collected yeah. these when they came out, and like they were unstorable. They were in big magazine size tabloid size, practically. Mm -hmm. and the art uh, they were bigger than the absolute. Um, yeah, they were like magazine size. If I'm not yeah. Mistaken. So th this, I, I feel like. If you want to read the stories, it's great. But if you really want to read the stories and get into the art, you really should get the absolute. But not everybody can afford an absolute. So that's probably good. They're putting this out in trade because all the stories just smash. Look, smash. Good, I like that. Word. I like that. I'll, I'll write that down to use again later. Thank you. Okay. I better copyright that then. Uh, <laughs> although I think the kids have already beat me to it. All right. Saga of Swamp Thing. Uh, collect this is the Rick Bache era, right? Jamie Delano mm -hmm. doing some of the stuff, uh, which will lead into the Hellblazer stuff. So, collecting issue 65 to 73, Swamp Thing annual number three, Hellblazer four and five, and material from Secret Origins 23 and Infinity Incorporated number four. Um, I'm happy about this. I know it's not an omnibus. I, I wanted an omnibus of this stuff, but a lot of the trade paperbacks have been out of print for a while, yeah. so uh. And didn't didn't Riley say in our chat that this was eventually going to contain stuff that wasn't even released in trades, like the the stuff that they didn't like get to finish, like the stuff that they didn't put in. Like I think I read somewhere there was like a Jesus story or something that they yeah, did. issue eighty eight is the controversial mm -hmm. story that got he pulled. hasn't finished that yet. But there was stuff um, after his trades that didn't get collected. So I'm hoping yeah. that book two will have those. I think you're. you're you guys I mean, are talking about the um, the unpublished 88th issue, right? Because it's got the picture of the cross and Jesus on yeah. it, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that but was the one that was very controversial. It was supposed to come out, and but it got they pulled it. And I think all we had was a cover, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. And it would be interesting if they decided to do it. I don't know. Uh, but that would be in book two. So this is a really nice surprise. Trade paperback, twenty nine ninety nine for three hundred and fifty two pages, though. This is great stuff. Titans Beast World Tour. So this is the new Titans story. Chip Zdarsky 
Josh Williams. This is the uh, this is the companion stuff to the Tom Taylor Titans event that came out during the winter. These are all separate one shots that are supposed to fill in with what happened to the rest of the DC universe. As the Titans are fighting uh, the the enemy that I won't spoil. So these are all the one shots contained in this trade paperback. Um, this sparks up a really good question. Are trades now thirty dollars? They used to be like twenty. Yeah, Josh. Welcome to getting old. <laughs> Back in my day, this was all land. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. I, I If uh, Curtis was here, he would preach about the price of paper. Yeah. Like he normally does. He is more in tune with the price of paper because he works in um, for a couple of companies that publish books. And yes, things have gone up. Uh, I don't know what the new price point is going to be, honestly, because I know I've seen a lot of comments on the Thor by Al Ewing book. It's also twenty nine ninety nine. Oh but yeah, there were other trades that were seventeen ninety nine with the same page count. So, what um, Omar can can you go back to? Uh, I'm sorry, if this is yeah. one hundred ninety two pages for twenty nine ninety nine, what was Swamp Thing? Three hundred and fifty two pages for twenty nine ninety nine. Interesting. Yeah. So it's like twice the size for the same price. Mm -hmm. So I really don't know what the standard is going to be yeah. for trade paperbacks. I think the only thing I noticed, because people wanted you know, to know why Thor was so expensive. The only thing I noticed in Thor was that it was not printed in Canada. It was, in, um, it was printed in America. But so are some of the mm -hmm. X books. They're also trade paperbacks are printed in America. I don't know if that affects the price. I don't know if it's Al Ewing. I don't know why this book is twenty nine ninety nine. <laughs> Chip Sadarsky and Joshua Williamson. I I don't know. I that that is a publisher question that I'm sure they probably will never let us know. You just yeah, you either buy it or you don't buy it. It's the same thing with every other hobby, right? Like toys or video games. Um. But yeah, I, I don't have an answer. But I did notice that there was a price jump. Um, but then we have like this book for 400 pages, $24.99. This is the Green Lantern book one. This was been this has been printed before, right? This was these are all getting a re re edition oh, re reprint. Sorry, Dom. This is really important. Half of the <laughs> class left for a meeting in the gym. Can you give my freshman English class a shout out? Woo. No. <laughs> have a good day. Astonishing Melanie. Have a good day. <laughs> I hope the kids are watching and they're like, yo, your husband just schooled you. Okay, yes, baby, of course. Uh stay in school, or this is what you're gonna be doing for a living. Oh, wait, that might be a good thing for some kids. <laughs> Love you, baby. Uh, you kids stay in school. Green Lantern <laughs> Rebirth 1 through 6, Green Lantern Secret Files and Origins 2005, number one. Green Lantern Corps, Recharge 1 through 5, and Green Lantern 1 through 3. Uh, Dom, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. This has been previously printed before, right? Yes, but they are all getting brand new editions. Um, I'm partly going to assume that they're going to continue the lines with like book 5 and so on and so forth so they can actually finish the run. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. We would like to see that. I would like, because I've been asked when these were coming back. And I guess they're not going to continue. It, it is interesting that they continued like things like Young Justice mm -hmm. without previously printing book one, but they are reprinting this. Then again, we are talking about probably the greatest run on Green Lantern, mm -hmm. at least well, at DC. One right? of the best selling runs of all time, just in general. Ah, would you guys agree, Jake? Uh, it is, yeah. It's like the Green Lantern story that I love the most. I don't know how you know, I, I know it was very popular. I, I think I own, I own the Omnis and the Absolutes, but. Yeah, it's the Green Lantern Store I own. Yeah, I, I looked at singles charts uh, at Comicron like back during this era from like 2006 to 2013, rough thereabouts. And Green Lantern was like the number one bestseller on every single month for the like seven years, seven, eight years that this story ran. It was wow. Insane. It was huge. I mean, Blackest Night was out like, yeah, it was, it was insane. Yeah, you couldn't it, even it, find it, copies of Blackest Night, sing, the single issues. Uh, this is cute, but completely unexpected that this is coming back to print. My <laughs> wife loves this little manga, uh, but now it's not CMX. CMX was their manga line at DC that we're trying out because everybody was publishing manga. Um, and there are some titles that have never been published by anyone else that D 
DC did. But this is by Joe Thompson, and it is the character of death. It's adorable. Does um, I have this at one time. Does it read Western style or is it Eastern style? Mo oh, when you oh, say oh, uh, left to right, it's traditional. It's it's the way that you like your books. Okay, I'll get it again. I know I have this, and I don't anymore. I do love that manga. She does love this manga. <laughs> she even has a statue of the Jill Thompson manga death. I've oh. never heard of that. I'm down for more death. It's cute. Is this an absolute? No, it is a digest size manga book. Um, another reprint, but it makes sense. It's Batman. It's Tom King. It sells. So it's the trade paperback of volumes one and two is also coming out. Uh, Wildcats two. Collecting. No, wait. This is the complete is, series. Is it over? Yeah, it, it was a twelve issue series that ran oh. from twenty twenty two or yeah twenty twenty two to late twenty twenty three. Huh. Okay. So Matthew Rosenberg. Okay. Some good art there. Oh, it's Mikey and the Absolute Sandman Volume 5. I don't think it is, but I have been wrong a lot, and it's early in the morning, so I'm sure I'm wrong, but I don't think... I'm almost... How about this? I'm 90% sure it's not in there. Wildcats? Yeah, it's not. No, Death. <laughs> in the Absolute Sandman Volume 5. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it is. Um, okay, and then here you go, Jess. What is this? Ooh, Have yeah, you been this, by the way, uh, I haven't started yet. Gio says it's great, and I'm excited that it's going to volume four. I have the first two, uh, I'm really excited that this is continuing on. I'm curious how these are selling. Um, Dom, how are they selling? That's a good question because. <laughs> Well, the you guys got to remember, like, these are free to read books. You can mm -hmm. download Webtoon right now and read all the issues from start to end without paying a single cent, unless you want to consider paying your phone and your internet bill cents. But they are very much loved by a good portion of the fan base that craves for these types of stories. So, you know, and they're, they're easily affordable, too, at the size that they're at. I'm teaching kids about collected editions by explaining this stream. Oh, that's wonderful, baby. Oh, good. Let's introduce them to some some word good words. Uh, where's Peter and Lars when I need them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joker Killer Smile coming out in a trade paperback. Mm. So the Jeff Lemire teaming up with Andre Sorrentino. Who Not a fan. Blowing up on Twitter right now. For not good reasons. You're not a fan of uh, this book? Or I was not. No, mm -hmm. this was a disappointment to me. Oh, yes, baby. There we go. Superman, the Triangle Years, or the Triangle Era Omnibus, Volume 1. Thank you for putting the content there, uh, Dom of X. I got you. So there was a tweet by Jerry Ordway that Dom shared with me talking about redrawing the piece. Or not redrawing it, but touching it up, right? Mm -hmm. He yeah. remastered it specifically for this collected edition with uh, and did it like didn't get paid. He just wanted to do it. And I thought mm. that was really cool. So what's really interesting is that this is a volume one, but it starts right before the Triangle Era. And if you're not familiar with the Triangle Era, because I know I've talked about it, and sometimes I see comments, and they're like, you keep mentioning this Triangle. So Triangle Era was kind of a way for DC to make you buy every one of their Superman books <laughs> in an amazing way by going one, two, three, and four. Like Man of Steel was like four. It, it's just a triangle. You didn't have to follow that, uh, but they strongly suggested it. There wasn't like a giant crossover happening. Uh, annuals would have just a triangle without a number sometimes, or sometimes they were a big part of it. And... Or it would cross over with like Justice League. Justice League would have a triangle. So this is crazy because if you think about Superman and the lack of Omnis, it's huge because we haven't had that many Superman Omnis post-Crisis on Infinite Earths. And I know like I'm four. biased and I'm so sorry because, uh, you know, the Golden Age and Silver Age weren't really for me. Those have been coming out. I think we still need two from the Golden Age, Jess. Is that right? Uh, I thought there was just one, but you okay, might one. I, I, that, but that's just what I thought. I mean, it's early in the morning for me too, so I could be wrong. 
Although I'll be wrong again later tonight, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So feel... the triangles were just on the cover. That's it. And they had a number on them. So all throughout the year, you could follow the adventures of Superman. And because every week he had a new book, whether it was Man of Steel, whether it was Action Comics, Adventures of Superman or Superman. It's just an easy way to, to, uh, to get addicted to the character and buy every single issue, including annuals or crossovers when you didn't want to. So this one uh, sparks up a lot of questions um, and that I want to address. Thank you so much. Uh, we are also excited. Superman Triangle Era Omni. I'm super, super excited. I, I am very excited for this. This gives me hope that DC's collected edition department is actually awake and paying attention. So when they released Superman Exile Omnibus, I was so excited because right before they released it, they reprinted Superman Death and Return of Superman Omnibus. And I thought oh my gosh, they might be adding something that is going to map these books like they thought ahead. We have mapped this out. We've got the John Byrne era mapped out. We've got the Triangle Years mapped out that, that will take us to this and, and forward. So between the Exile Omnibus and this, there is enough material, but I don't know if it's going to be enough for an Omnibus. My friend who is a su big Superman fan, I was talking to him last night with what contents are in the Omni and what's not in it. Oh. And he said that, well, we both agreed, there is, like, this is supposed to start off with the um, Crimson Kryptonite story, but it mm -hmm. doesn't have the Starman issue right. that picks it off. And he also said that there's about 26 to 27 ish issues in between Exile and this Omni that could be published into a Omni that bridges the gap between Exile and Triangle Years Volume One. What they could, <clears throat> no, never mind. I was going to say they could put them um, so John Byrne, <laughs> Superman together into probably two Omnis and include the world of in there, the world of Smallville, the world of Krypton, the world of um, uh, wherever the hell he lived. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> brain. <laughs> the Daily Planet. Where's that love? Metropolis. Okay. Wow. Metropolis. Anyway. wow. <laughs> <laughs> my brain thinks the numbers right now because I'm mapping. Uh, they <laughs> into two Omnis, and then we have the Exile Omni because that will take you directly there. And yeah, there is about 27, I would say about 30 something issues um, in between Exile and this. I mean, we've seen them do silly things before that I love, like Road to No Man's Land. Can't imagine it being called Road to the Triangle. Road to era. <laughs> Maybe the No Triangle era. I'm, whatever it is, I'm here for it. Pre Triangle or um, Isosceles Triangle era omnibus. Something like that. I'm in. Now, the other problem I see with this, because I was going to custom bind these, I've got eight from John Byrne to the death of Superman, like right before the death of Superman. Um, so this will go into like Panic in the Sky and stuff. But are they going to collect the entire Triangle Years era? Because if they do, that takes us all the way to Jeff Loeb in the City of Tomorrow holy crap you're talking over 500 issues i, I know because that's, i have the, the boxes over there it's like, right? it's like eight to nine eight nine ten omnis right there Easily. of material like Easily. that is big and i don't i have no idea if dc is oh, going to continue to there are 37 issues between exile and this omni if they include the annuals and crossover legion annual and kick it off with the star man that's missing from here but then again star man might still make it on here maybe the page count is showing because there's another book I want to talk about with the page count that is just humongous. So, Ooh, I like this Superman eradication and other stories. Cause that is the introduction to those characters. So oh, yeah. Hey, I know and that guy. Superman 51 to 150 when Dan Jurgens leaves. All right, here we go. Let's see what Nathan has. Uh, World of Krypton, World of Smallville. Would you not include those with the uh, John Byrne stuff, though? I think that would be the cap off for the John Byrne era. It like, would maybe be. that's the way I mapped it. It would be. Um, well, I was talking to Nathan. No, I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> World, uh, material from Action Comics Weekly, 601 to 641. Action Comics, 642, 647, 58, 38. 
through 48, Adventures of Superman 461 and 471, and then Annual 2 and Legion 90, Annual Number 1. So that would be a good one. But I like the Eradication title. I think I'm sold on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Regardless, this is a phenomenal start. Whatever they decide to do, I'm I'm happy for it. I'm here for more Superman Omnis. Uh, we have been complaining for years that there's no super. I don't know where Ken Kenny. Are you here watching? Because I'm. I was. Uh, <laughs> I was going to do a health check on you to make sure you're okay. Because he has been coming on my stream six, seven years now, mm -hmm. asking where's the new Superman Omni. And there and you I'm go, one, buddy. And it's not the new Fifty Two either. Mm -hmm. It's fourteen hundred pages for one twenty five. That's that's good. good. They they could have bonked it up to one fifty, but they kept it at one twenty five for that many pages. That's really good. Good job, DC. Jake, I still, I still think it's crazy attention. that this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. What's up? Why is it I mean, triangle? Think, yeah. So there was four different Superman titles all running at the same time, and the triangles were a marketing ploy to get you addicted to buying all of them in the correct order. They were all good too. You got man, like what's in here? Like you got time and time again, right? You got blackout. You got the brain transplant of a super important character there are a lot of great stories in this <laughs> that story is so stupid i love it, it. is a stupid <laughs> stupid story but it's a good i i enjoy it there now, are only, there are only like two trades out for this era like crisis of the crimson kryptonite and was a time and i can't remember what the time other and one time was again. Time yeah time okay time, time, time and time again, again. And they made it out of print forever and they that's all Luther's brain yeah. <laughs> um one other important thing that I forgot to mention earlier, some things might change because this this isn't the full catalog or the full solicitations. So the price might change. The content might change. Let's, and let's the, page count, the, the page let's, count is usually pretty accurate, though. But just in case, you know, it, things might change. We've seen that happen a lot. And the worst thing that could happen is that this book may never come and be solicited we've seen that too so fingers crossed knock on wood this actually comes out because the cat we've seen books pulled out of catalogs before both by marvel and dc uh there's a whole list of omar's heartbreaking out there i'll never get I'm impulse by together. mark wade oh, my immateria collection i'll never get impulse by mark wade omar <laughs> yeah yes yes when it Changes send all the complaints to Dama Vexi is my intern, and uh, you can take it I'll take it. Uh, <laughs> all right, oh, I'm excited for it. Joe, what's up, buddy? How are you? And, and look at Justin, how are you, man? Justin, always, always a nice work. person. Uh, so excited to triangle era, yes. Oh, and also need the Lex Luthor on Etherized biography. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Let's map Superman. Number 12, Action Comics, Volume 2, The Hell and Back. Uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson. This is post the <clears throat> War World Saga. I believe this is the end of his run, if I'm not mistaken. The top 10. I like that price. I like that price better. 1999. Map I mean, my ass. There is one more, regardless. Chris? Uh, hold on. I see somebody came in late. If you're coming in late, look to the chat or just rewind. Uh, says Omni Superman are in the middle of Man of Steel and Exile. Nope, it's after Exile before Death and Return. Batman, the Joker, year one. This is the Chip Zdarsky stuff. My wife has been loving this. I don't know if anybody else is reading it. I am. Uh, I have um, got to volume three. I've just done volume two. So this one is $19.99 for the trade, $24.99 for the hardcover, 232 pages. I really like that Giuseppe Kelly Comincoli cover. That's the one that was the second printing, right? That no, this made. is the first printing of issue 142. Okay. First, first issue of Joker. Oh, that's right. The second printing was just his face, I think. Mm -hmm. But it was like a... Like it's a like a delicate cover or something? Yeah. It was like a foil-ish variant. I haven't read it. It's one of those things that I, you know, I will read it, but I also think the Joker's origin should be left alone. So I didn't need this, but I also didn't need a Joker movie and that won an Academy Award. So what the hell do I know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. Batman Superman oh. World's Finest Volume 4 Return, Return to Kingdom Come, Jess. Yes. Yes. This is Mark one of the Wade. best things I've read this year. I love this it. book. 
Okay. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. So um, this is the hardcover. Oh my I, gosh, those characters just bring back memories. I am. Um, yeah. We have two in continuity po uh, Kingdom Come sequels now. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Jeff Johns has his with Keep Alex Ross Come. in Justice Society of America, mm -hmm. and now Mark Wade and Dan Mora have theirs in. And Mark Wade had his older one. Yep, with uh, why am I forgetting the artist's name? Ariel Lalibetti or. Uh... I tried yeah, he's to get one into the, the kingdom. kingdom. Yep. But yeah, I had just read this and I liked this better and I couldn't really get into the kingdom. Yeah, same here. I think a lot of people could and people didn't dig it because it happened way too soon after Kingdom Come and it didn't have Alex Ross involved nor his artwork. But oh my gosh, the ideas that Mark Wade and Alex Ross had that's in the Kingdom Deluxe Edition. Oh, I would have loved to have seen them come out. This is a prequel, not a sequel. It says return. Don't you lie to me, Ryan. <laughs> I know what return means. I've seen Superman Returns. <laughs> English might be my second language, but I got that word down. Uh, this was fun. All-Star Batman, the deluxe edition. Scott Snyder, not the All-Star Batman and Robin with uh, Jim Lee and Frank Miller, but this is the Scott Snyder, Raphael Albuquerque. I'm surprised this, this didn't get released as an absolute edition. 14 issues. And the covers by Jock, forty nine ninety nine. The deluxe hardcover I guys. I had a mistake on this one. <laughs> What's that? I, I have the. the uh, I, it says TP standard size. It should be hardcover oversized. I don't know why it has there on the. So yeah, send your hate my way. <laughs> on the Dom, 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 what are you doing? charging fifty dollars for a trade paperback it's now. A what the heck? It's a, it's a hardcover. Dom, 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 listen to me really quick. I'm gonna teach you something on the air. You let them catch the mistakes. You never point out their mistakes. This will come in also, handy in a relationship and live stream. Never well, point you out always, your mistakes. You can always say you did it on purpose to make engagement, so people comment and go, "Shouldn't this be a deluxe edition?" and get that engagement. You know, sneak in a mistake now and then. Hey, Richard, how you doing, buddy? Uh, so remember that. Remember that. I hope my wife's students are still watching. They're like writing that down. Oh, I like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I I um I never picked this one up, so I'm excited for this one. Oh, this is so right. great. Yeah, I know you dug it. This is uh, Jeff Parker and Mike Alred, right? Laura Alred working on the classic Batman. Yeah, sixty-six, one through thirty. Batman 66, the last episode, and material from Solo. They also did a Wonder Woman 70, 77? Was that it? Jess, do you remember that series? I, I, it wasn't, I it wasn't Parker and uh, Mike Alred. It was somebody, I think it was another team. Tell, tell me about this series, Jess. What makes this series so lovable? Uh, well, I, Mike, Mike and Laura Alred don't do all the art in it, but um, they do uh, a little bit. But the stories are pulled... Uh, straight from the TV show, which is now known as Batman 66 with, you know, Cesar Romero with makeup mm -hmm. over his uh, mustache. mustache in the book. And it's, you have, you have to, <laughs> can you imagine that happening nowadays? Somebody, a oh. Latino, a Latino being cast as Joker and refuses to shave his mustache. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Cesar Cesar Romero was, he, blowing up, man? <laughs> he was a serious actor and like, oh, yeah. uh, and, and so actually, so was um uh batman uh adam west they were actually <clears throat> caesar romero was uh like a uh a lady killer type in in a lot of movies so he was not shaving that mustache at all um but but it's fun yeah i mean jeff parker's a great writer yeah. you you have to go into this knowing that the stories are going to be funny and campy and just uh, have fun with it because uh, it, it's it, it pulls straight from the TV show and it's it's a lot of fun. I'm did, so glad. Did you ever watch the animated movies that they did like more recently based off the 66 TV show? Because those were also a lot of fun. Mm, I haven't. Now I have all these. Oh, okay. So I, I have Batman 66 meets Wonder Woman 77, but I didn't know she had her own Wonder yeah, Woman... Not... It uh I thought it was uh it was a series. Batman Incorporated, the complete series, another one I did not see coming. It's the Ed Brisson stories, John Timms and Mike Michelle Bandini Bandini. 
David LaFuente. This is a trade paperback for $29.99. Hmm. So this is the series that, of course, spun out of that era of Batman uh, Incorporated with all these characters. I'm surprised it's not a, a standard hardcover. Because they already put the two standard they hardcovers out. Shells? <laughs> Mustache. Uh, Bar, you missed all the Poison Ivy Absolute Editions. Yeah, and showing my Harley shirt that a fan sent me, Mr. Tex. Where is he? I thought he'd be in the chat. Maybe, maybe he is. He's quietly watching at work. <laughs> Green Lantern by Jeff Johns Volume 2 is also being reprinted. This is the thick trade paperback, $39.99. So now you have Carlos Pacheco, Ethan Van Skyver, Ivan Reyes, Daniel Acuna, and Simon Bianchi on the artwork here. How far did they make it? You said, Dom, did they make it? The they got to book four and okay. stopped there completely. What was book four? Was that the right Rage of the, the, Black it had the It went up to the Rage of the Red Lantern storyline and mm -hmm. Agent Orange, if I recall correctly. Uh, that's what we need is a Red Lantern Omni. I know, that's man. We really need. Uh, Batman by Grant Morrison, book one. This is collecting issue 655. The six no, no, no. That's the reference, Omar. We don't know. Oh, the re oh we don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uncanny Omar to learn to read one day. <laughs> <laughs> but odds are they're this is probably what you're not hoping. going to collect the resurrection of Raj Al Ghul. Raj Al Ghul. Raj Al Ghul. Raj. You know, it's oh, funny. It's... Like, I, I, uh, we've been making TikTok videos, and I didn't realize how many comments that we'd get by people that know how to pronounce it. And I was like, <laughs> well, you can take it up with Dennis O'Neill. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait, you can't. So just leave it alone. Um, but I assume it's not going to collect that, just because none of the other collections that have Grant Morrison's name has had it. No matter the recap pages, though, they at least did that for the omnibus. That was new. I remember that was really cool that they drew recap pages for the crossover. Just you know how Marvel and DC says in part two. Robin broke his leg or whatever, right? They actually drew one page of a recap of what happened in said comic book. I thought that was a really cool thing. Oh, man, what did I miss? Comics. Myself and comics, that's what you missed. Comic books. <laughs> All right. Speaking of Green Lantern, we Ooh, knew this was coming, but it's nice to get confirmation. Although... <laughs> Let's talk about it. Green Lantern Core 39 through 47, 59 through 60, Green Lantern Core 0 through 20. That's the relaunch of the series because it split off. Um, Tony Bedard had his own series at that point. What was it called? Uh, uh, it was Green mm. Lantern War, uh, not Warrior. That was something. Oh, no. G Green Lantern Warriors was the other series that it spun out to. Mm. Uh, Emerald Warriors. And Blackest Night. Number eight, Green Lantern 65 through 67, Green Lantern 17 and 20, Green Lantern Core Annual Number One, and material from Green Lantern 80th Anniversary 100 page super spectacular. So, if you're wondering what are issues 48 through 58, that is, I think that that's, is the that's Tony the Bedard. Tony Bedard run right before War of the Green Lanterns hits. Emerald Warriors is that what it was called? Something like that. He's he got his own series. Thank you so much, Bruce. Batman by Snyder. Deluxe should have included Black Mirror, then released Batman by Scott Snyder Omnibus Volume 3. Or Volume 0, right? Because Black Mirror took mm. place before that. That would be it. Actually, that would be pretty cool. But then All-Star doesn't really take... Thank you for the super chat, my friend. Um, Just in case Melanie's freshman English class is still wa watching, that needs to be should have, not should of, just so you know. That's not one of my biggest pet peeves as... Uh... Mine? Scarring through yeah. the internet. You talking? To... <laughs> okay. Just to remind, just talking to Melanie's English class, not the super chat guy. I'm what just is using best him as an example. In life, this life. show comics is best in life. Oh, this show, yeah, sure. Um, okay. Tomasi left Core for Emerald Warriors. Bedard took over mm -hmm. Core. Then Tomasi went back to Green Lantern Core, and Bedard did the New Guardians with the oh, New, New Guardians. Guardians. That's right. That's what it was called. So that's what's missing from here. But I remember. Peter Tomasi mentioning that it was not that it wasn't going to skip his issues. 
maybe it just got too big and they were like no no but we want everything with just you in it could be the case of you know in the volume one they it skipped the keith giffen issues because well, yeah, 40, the, yeah, 48 through 58 was all written by Bedard, which isn't in this omnibus, but it does collect Emerald Warriors 1 through 13, the Tomasi series that he did with per Fernando Passarin, which counts on Guy, Dur Guy Gardner during his stuff in Brightest Day. And that's all in there. Tomasi said it would be. Um, I, I have no idea if they're ever going to do the Bedard GLC issues, but... It would be cool, as, as painful as it might be to <laughs> to read these out of order. But uh, if they added the Keith Giffen issues mm -hmm. to those Tony Bedard issues and just release it as a deluxe, kind of like what they're doing with the Grant Morrison and Mark Miller mm -hmm. Flash books. Throw in Ion in there because Ion isn't collected in any of the... Mm, fine, go ahead and throw Red Lantern and Larfleet Freeze in there. Let's go ahead and just make it a big Green Lantern book. Green Lantern companion and while we're omnibus. And Superman by John Byrne. <laughs> X, we can wait, Omar. We need to get X Factor one through eight in there somehow. <laughs> I'm not, why did you bring that up? This is a DC stream, a strike two, Dom. <laughs> Legion of Superheroes, the Great Darkness Saga. I recorded my overview of the um, Fourth World Omnibus Volume Two a couple of days ago. I'm not sure when I'm going to drop it, but I always said I hate it when DC made this i realized the cover or the book the story itself is 40 years old but one of the coolest things about reading the great darkness the saga is that there's a big of there's a big twist in it that happens and that's pretty much the cover um <laughs> it's a good story though i wasn't even a legion guy when i read this I'm, i mean i don't really think of myself as one now but i'm more into legion now than i was back then I thought they were just a bit of a headache. Um, this, this and this, the hardcover have been out of print forever. Yeah, they had a deluxe edition. So the Omnibus does have most of it. And um, if you want it in oversized format, it's a great, great story. Too. Oh, yeah. The artwork by Giffen is phenomenal. It's like a mashup of like, I don't know how to describe it, like Jack Kirby and in like Blade Runner. Something like that. It just looks amazing. It's a great story. That is a pretty cool cover, though. It is. It is. Uh, the Joker, the man who stopped laughing, the complete series. I had no idea about this at all. This is a book? This is yeah. A book. <laughs> Apparently, there were 12 issues. It's a wow. It's the uh, Joker, Joker solo series right before Chip brought him back to Batman. Which is like yeah, in between the Tynan Joker run and uh, volume yeah, volume three of Chip Zdarsky's Batman. And wait, what? What's Joker Year One? Is that that's, that's by that's Zdarsky? the ongoing series? And that's uh, that's up to three volumes now, or yeah. one and two already out. Batman by Zdarsky is up to three volumes. The third volume is called Joker Year One. Oh, okay, okay, got it. I, Okay, I totally missed Joker Year One. Yeah, I got you, man. That's why we do these shows to clarify things for <laughs> Thanks, each other, buddy. Thank you. I got you. Uh, Jack Kirby and Blade Runner is Omac. No, that's still Jack Kirby. <laughs> Speed Force. I didn't even know about this series. Um, one through six. Who, who's that character on the left? That is Avery Ho, the Flash from Josh. Uh, Gene Luen Yang's new Superman run. Oh. Okay, it also that... shows up in Joshua Williamson's Flash run. That's why I didn't know who that was. Okay, thank you. Hmm. And that is still Wally West, right? That is Wallace West from... Yes. So, in this universe... God, I can't believe I'm asking this. <laughs> <laughs> in this current DC... Dawn of DC before the reboot universe... There are still two flashes, right? That are named Wally West and Wallace West. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are they related? <laughs> I... This is a genuine question. I, 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 has anybody Wally... brought this up? I'm sure Joshua Williams. I haven't read the second part of his run. They're, but I... they're, they're not related, but you know how like Wally West gets like, like the um, pre-52, New 52 Wally West gets brought back to the New 52 world. And that's what everything's kind of flown out of. 
Okay, yeah, but I didn't know if they're like cousins or like yeah, kind of like dirty. Barry is his uncle, right? I kind of figured they might make Wally his uncle. That'd be kind of cool. And then I, I don't know. I just I haven't kept up with Flash. I read the first half of Joshua Williamson's arc, and then I got drowned in other books. So I need to go <laughs> back into that if I ever need to make a reading order. But I think DC's making it easier by releasing Omnis. Mm -hmm. Their father and son. I don't believe Captain Underpants. Take that name off. You don't they're deserve it. You are a liar. They're cousins. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. They're, are they cousins? They're uh, cousins. Can't they're confusing cousins. people since the eighties, dude. When you have one of the biggest brains in the in comic knowledge, like Mark Wade, reaching out to social media, asking, <laughs> "Can somebody help me? What is the continuity of Robin these days?" <laughs> I there's no shame in asking. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, Wally and Wallace are canon together. They're cousins. Wallace is named after his older cousin. Okay, so legit. See, Captain Underpants, you came in here and you lied to me. <laughs> mods, do something about him. Barry, my mod's too busy saying Barry's better than Wally. I don't even understand where that came from. No one's saying that, James. Stay on target. American Vampire's coming out in thickies. Uh, to be determined. Thank you for that. Dom of X. Um, 352 pages, $39.99. Got it. Is this series uh, good? I've never read any of it, or I don't own it at all. It's a very fun yeah. horror book. Really good. Oh, it's really, excellent. really good. Like I'm always on the hunt for horror comics because that's what my wife reads. It's, yeah, she dig this, Jake. She like the character, the main character is so unlikable. Mm -hmm. At first, you're like, oh. I don't want to read about this guy, but then something happens, especially like after the Stephen King. So Stephen King, I don't know if he co-wrote. His name is on the book for the first six issues. Um, and then Scott Snyder took over the run. And it just mm. becomes, I don't know, this amazing like TV show. And it could make a really good TV yeah, show. You're yeah, you're right. It's really good, Jake. There's two Omnis and... You need them like today. You should probably. Oh, yeah, if you them. haven't read them, man, they're so good. You don't she go. Like you don't need to go out and buy the Omnis. You can just read. Well, I'm gonna buy the Omnis if I get them. Plus, if I say I'm buying them for my wife, I didn't. It's not like I bought myself a book, right? Yeah, you're buying them for her. She's the right. horror fan. She has <laughs> her little bookshelf like, in my room. Sucks. She's she like likes. Uh, she likes Scott Snyder's horror. She she loved witches. She's read that like five times. Yeah, if, if she loved witches, she'll love American yeah, Vampire too. One hundred percent. Grant Morrison's Animal Man coming back in a compendium this time around. So this is our first compendium in this catalog. Did they spell it correctly? They did. <laughs> um, <laughs> Animal Man 1 through 26, material from Seeker Origins number 39. 704 pages, $59.99. I love this book. Mm. This is the book that made me think... Wow, comic Dang. books are just more than people punching each other. I don't remember Omar voting for this book that me and Jess picked for the Evergreen stream. That's all I'm saying. Me and Jess. Oh, does it need to be an Evergreen? Evergreen? I didn't say it should have. Maybe we should do Evergreen compendiums. I don't know if that would still make it. Better. Oh Lord, let's do Evergreen absolutes. That'd be fun. Call me for that one. That would be fun. <laughs> um, but if you haven't read it, this is an amazing book. Uh, can't. They bring can they bring back Mark Wolfman to fix DC again? Here's the thing, Bruce. Thank you for the super chat, buddy. I don't think Marv nor Kurt Music nor Mark Wade could sit together and agree on a new timeline. I think it's just be like whatever, man. Everybody just everybody Tom King it and write your own pocket universe. Doesn't matter. One thing doesn't have to affect another book, and then we'll just reboot it in another crisis. Yeah, I think. We need to take it a lot less seriously than we do. I'm happy DC's why... doing more compendiums. I really like that format. They won't step fixing DC. No. Just leave it alone. If they leave it alone, honestly, that that wouldn't be the worst thing. It's not that confusing, right? If you're just enjoying the Batman books, but if you want to branch out to World's Finest, that gets a little bit confusing because you're going to be like, that's not the Dick Grace and Robin outfit. What's happening here? I, I kind of like that, though. Like, that's what makes World's Finest so fun is that it feels like a little pocket universe. And when they awkwardly tried to move it into the main continuity with Lazarus Planet, I was like, that's kind of lame. But then back to the pocket universe, it was fun. 
Uh, this one I'm excited about because this has been out of print for a long time. Well, uh, the standard, like the regular one. So there's never been a deluxe edition. Yeah. 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 yeah, this is a good one. One of best Batman stories ever. I'm, fi- yeah. I'm happy about it. I'm not happy with the price to page count because it just feels so thin. But I'm very happy it's getting printed. Well, I mean, there it looks like prices are kind of all over the place there. too. And again, this is not the solicitation, so things could change. Um, yeah, this is great. Party plus you got Bernie Wrights and Troy Batman. Who doesn't yeah. want that? That was great, man. This was such this a hot great. book when it was coming out in singles. So the here, Jake, you were or no, who was taking you were you were saying something about the price dumb. Look at it this way. A month ago, you would try to find the Batman the Cult trade paper bag and look at the prices of that compared to $39.99 in oh, yeah. like you know. I'll take my it's a better deal. I, I'll happily pay 40 bucks for that book. Uh Catwoman. My gosh, 59 363. This book. I this is another title I've not been keeping up with. Teeny oh. Howard, Stefano Raphael. With a David Nakayama cover. Bitchin. Yeah, you said that properly. Good job. Uh <laughs> yes. <laughs> Guy's great. Super nice guy, too. If you ever go oh, to him. Super nice. So anybody keeping up with this dumb Catwoman? Anybody in the chat keeping up with Catwoman? I read the first arc of Catwoman. I haven't read since, but I do know what's happening in the book constantly. So, well, the last one I read was the was it Innocentes run? I think. Yeah, Bard. This is a female character in a female written book. I know you're reading it, right? Yep. I'm a little behind on Catwoman. I just got the Brubaker omnibus yesterday, so. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna put Rom V out and some. Oh, you got a while to ch- catch up, Jake. You, Wonder Woman <laughs> uh, by Press. The you, first you skip, you skipped the previous Did you skip one. You no, skipped one. No I more. didn't. No, no, Dom, Dom, I, the strike three, Dom. Um, <laughs> you did skip for one. once. I'm not the one with all the strikes. Usually it's me with all the I, strikes. I, I, I didn't skip any. I promise. It just went uh, sometimes in the uh, this skips a little bit forward. So I had to go back to this first. So that would be 29, I promise. If you look at the number down there, it says 28. The next one's 29. Good pitch. Uh, Wonder Woman by <laughs> Pass, Volume 1. $39.99. This has been previously collected before in trade paperbacks. Of course, an omnibus edition. And then this sticky right here. Catwoman is not very good right now. Teeny Howard ruins all the female <laughs> books I read. <laughs> Yeah, bar strong opinions on those on team. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's up? Speaking of strong, oh, YP, papers, what up? Magic, I'm enjoying it, but I think she's doing better on Harley. Oh, she's also on Harley. Oh, don't get this bar started on Harley. <laughs> See, 29. We're good, guys. I got this. <laughs> All right, John Constantine by Hellblazer by Delano, volume Omnibus Volume One. So this is the one that doesn't add up that I think will be changed. Uh, first of all, I am so excited about this book. For the last five years on my channel, I've been doing my most wanted DC Omnis, probably longer than that now, and this is always in the top ten. Uh, just give me Hellblazer in Omnibus format, and finally we got our first Hellblazer Omnibus, and it was creator centric. And and it's wonderful, and there's a problem with that, and that is that is the best Hellblazer run ever. Like it didn't get better to me in Hellblazer um, than Grant Morris or uh, Garth Ennis's run. So the problem that I see with this is that they're labeling it a Omnibus Volume One, but there's really not enough material because Jamie wrote it all the way to issue number forty. Issue forty one kicks off the Garth Ennis run. So I don't know what else they could put into a volume two. And being that this book is, again, things could change, right? Maybe they could ch- lower the uh, the page count and the price. But this is 1,584 pages. And what we're looking at here is essentially even throwing in that annual about 38, 38, 39 issues. It just doesn't add up. So I'm thinking maybe there was a mistake and 18 more issues need to be added in there. So hell yes, mm. I'm in. Regardless, I'm in. Even if they make this smaller, you know, half the page count, yeah. I'm just excited that it's finally coming out. It's a huge book, so maybe that's what's wrong, or maybe the co- uh, the content is what's wrong. I'm hoping it's the content because I like my books thick, baby. Mm-hmm. What do you all think? Have you all read this run, Jess? Are you you're a fan of Hellblazer, right? Yeah, I'm a big fan of Hellblazer. I I 
that's one of the few comics that I read all the way to 300. I collected all the singles, mm-hmm. read it all the way through 300. I have the trade paperbacks now. Um, I, I don't know if I'll upgrade to this, but I, I love all of Hellblazer. I know people tend to not dig Delano as, as much as Ellis. I mean, Ennis, and that's fair. I get it. But I feel like Delano wrote it uh, a strong Hellblazer, and it just all, all the writers had their different takes, and all the writers on this, I felt, did a good job. I I loved every single issue of Hellblazer. All the arcs were in, way interesting. Oh my gosh, yeah. I mean, some better than others, right? I remember taking a little bit of a dip. I wasn't the biggest fan of the was it the Paul Jenkins era. Um, but everybody writes him in such an interesting way. Yeah. And the cool thing, and I'm, I'm dude, I miss this, by the way, was my Constantine team. Right. Same. Fun, growing up, like, <laughs> dude, to, <laughs> there, there's some things I can't repeat on the air that would, the, the, the ending of some storylines that I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy's so awesome. Um, <laughs> it's because of the character that he is and the way that he jokes. But the cool thing and the coolest thing about the character is that he ages in real time. So what you're reading about at the beginning of the Delano run, you know, time has taken a toll on him by the time you get uh, to like Mike Carey's run. And actually, uh, Garth Ennis touches upon that on his run, too, with his very first story arc. It's really cool. And... The- Unfortunately, 300 issues, and then they rebooted it, and they put him into the DC main characters, which was a mistake. Um, (laughs) The other thing that's weird, if this is um, uh, volume one, is that Neil Gaiman wrote number 27. So where's that going to get put? Oh, please don't do that. (laughs) Don't do that, Jess. I'm just asking. Well, because remember, they skipped issues in Garth Ennis' run, too. And then they wow. like the Garth Ennis run. Like I, re- I really wish they would rethink the way they're putting these books. I think Garth Ennis is still in print, though, unfortunately. But if it goes out of print, just remap them to have a volume one, two. And I realize not everybody's like me that wants everything. But Hellblazer is completely worth making room. Yeah. on your yeah. shelf. Store. I agree. Uh, I think it's going to be the page count that goes because if you look at the image, it says by Jamie and Delano omnibus volume one so i'm thinking the price and the page count page count definitely um hold on a second really quick so this is from bruce thank you bruce for hellblazer 39 issues only gets it to roughly about 800 pages definitely not 1584 pages then i think that's what's wrong that's probably a mistake just because the image says omnibus volume one how many omnis for 300 eight but I mean, if they do it in chronological order, if they fatten them up, if they make them fifteen hundred pages, oh my gosh, less than that. But probably won't be a long time before we see that. This should just be Hellblazer, not by Delano, and just include those Grant Morrison and Gaiman issues, and just yeah, because Morrison wrote two of them, right? Like uh, later yeah, on, I think. Uh, oh, I thought it was right before uh, Gaiman, but I might be wrong. Oh, it was it was around game. It was before Ennis, but it was it was during Delano's run. Yeah. So we will see, oh, but it does. I mean, it does have the Saga of Swamp thing in there too, and those were done by Rick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. And Sandman. So who knows? We will see. We will see. We'll see. Maybe the page count change, or maybe they'll make it all in one and get rid of Omnibus Volume One and just put Omnibus on there. Yeah. All right. Superman or Adventures of Superman, John Kent. I read this in hardcover. I've forgotten that Clayton Henry, I actually like Clayton Henry's artwork. He's been working over at uh, Valiant for a while. Uh, But this also has some Derek Robertson stuff. And it's still the continuing stories of Jonathan Kent. And it's still great by Tom Taylor. What's that, Jake? Oh, I read the first three issues of this one and it was really good. I got to finish it. That's fine. It's fun. Definitely a different take on Jonathan Kent, but what are you going to do? He's aged up. Nothing you can do about that. That's canon now. Uh, Superman, House of Brainiac. This is supposed to be great. Joshua Williamson's Superman, Kenny told me, was one of the best Superman yeah, out there. I've, I've heard a lot 
uh, good things about this. It's Have you a, read this, Dom? Yeah. So, what Joshua Williams and Superman in vibe is very much from the good spirited '90s Superman, the animated series show. It brings a lot of that vibe over to his run, which is why I'm having a fun time with uh, with this run. And to explain the House of Brainy, I guess for for all of those who are uh, who might not be aware of it, he is crossing over his time on Action Comics with Superman from April to June into one consolidated event that splits between both titles. And this is going to be all collected in this trade paperback. So it has which, not been solicited as a hardcover. No, but also I'm actually curious because in the Penguin uploads, we saw that uh, action comics volume two with philip kennedy johnson's last issues on action has been solicited and this is here jason aaron's action comics run which is only three issues still has yet to be uploaded so i'm very interested to see how they're going to collect those three issues of jason Aaron and john tim's action comics into a trade hardcover whatever it might be okay and Green Lantern wow. by Jeff Johns, book three. They're committing. Yeah. They're collecting even the crossover of the Sinestro Core War. So that's all in here. 440 pages, $39.99. Oh, my gosh. I am so happy oh. to see this. I um, Great. If you haven't had a chance to that's read so it, awesome. uh, <laughs> Stephanie is amazing. She's – okay. I still, you know, like – Babs to me will always be Oracle. Cassandra Kane will always be my Batgirl. Um, but I loved Stephanie Brown's time as Batgirl. It was fun, short-lived, and has been out of print for a long time. Been out of print for four, four and a half years. It Before, came back into print, and then it went back out. Yeah. Of well, no, they printed them as, as stickies, right? Mm -hmm. yep. First, there were those four skinny. I think there were four. Yeah, there were four I skinny four trades. Skinny trades. And then yeah, I still have those two, and I never upgraded to these. But these actually have more of a complete story, Jess. I don't know if you knew that or not. Oh, uh, then they do. The four skinny trades skip one particular story arc. I can't remember yeah, which one. From it's for it's the issue from Batman Incorporated, That's which it. yes, it, which includes the Grant Morrison issue where he where they wrote uh, Stephanie Brown. As oh, well. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so I need to get these this, are more guys. complete. Yeah. Damn it. Okay. Good. <laughs> Not it's, not, it's, 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 it's another one that I've wanted an omnibus of, mm -hmm. but I actually have a custom omnibus. Um, I would love to see everybody get this though in an omnibus format. It's, it's a fantastic, fantastic run. Lots of great moments between Stephanie Brown and the rest of her supporting cast and the revolving door of characters that move in and out. We got Damian Wayne, Tim Drake as Red Robin. You still got uh, Babs showing up in there at, at moments. It's so wholesome, fun, and you got Stephanie kicking ass as the brand new Batgirl, and it's awesome. It's called the Life and Strike Drags. Yep. Uh, that was the first time I remember seeing Art Germ too on covers. Mm -hmm. I had never I, I didn't know who he was, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, oh my gosh, these covers are awesome. I wish that person did internal covers. When Boy, is this little did I know. Oh God! Finally, yes. Flash Volume Two Omnibus. I feel like we've had so many Volume Ones. The Flash by Mark Wade Omnibus Volume Two, breaking the curse of the Flash by Mark or Flash Omnibus Volume One, because we've had Francis Manipool. We've got the Joshua Williams Volume One. We've got the William Messner Lobes, which I think should just be a Volume One. But um. Now we have a volume two in the catalog. I cannot wait for this. This is amazing. Uh, you've got the introduction of Impulse and Mike Waringo on artwork here. Carlos Pacheco gone both gone too soon. Oh, we also I forgot we also lost Brian Augustine too. We did Brian Augustine, like he's the reason that Mark Wade is who he is, and Mark will tell you that anytime. Uh, they were buddies, and he pulled them all over to, to do Flash. And that forever changed his life. Oh, man. Um, so we can talk about this one. People have asked how many will there be. And I'm thinking, depending on, well, how many pages did the first one have? 
About the same. About, about the same. Know. About the same for 150 as well. So four probably. And there's I assume they're going to skip those issues by Mark Miller and Garth Ennis since that's coming out in a deluxe art cover later this Grant year. Morrison? Sure. Oh yeah, Grant Morrison. Morrison. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Okay. Hey, Garth, Garth Ennis wrote Flash out of <laughs> yeah, pretty metal flash run. Yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. 231 to 236. That's the Wild Wild West stories. Mm. So I'm interested to see how that gets collected. That's the only problem with creator-centric books, other than um, you know, you have books like in chronological order will include everything. Creator-centric books tend to just focus on the main creator. So <laughs> there's these missing issues that have never been collected. Right, it's by I think it's actually Catherine Eminen, uh, right after Jeff Johns left Flash, mm -hmm. and I was so hoping they would do it. They I was like, just sneak them in there, DC. It was post the uh, Infinite Crisis, yeah, but, yep. before the relaunch and before the return of Mark Wade. But I'm 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 excited for this one. Uh, here's a super sticker from Elon. Kid New <laughs> Mint, are you the Red Sun? Because you make me weak at the knees. Oh. <laughs> Wow, thank you. Uh, in case you're lying, a Superman joke. <laughs> well, no Superman joke. from what Earth, <laughs> Jess? Huh? So, what in Superman from what Earth makes him weak? Uh, what, 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 if, where, if there's a red sun, mm -hmm. it makes he Superman said, weak. Yeah, which Earth? Is it all Earths? To my knowledge, what are you okay. trying to trick me into? <laughs> I'm not trying to trick you. I'm asking a point. I'm carrying a conversation. Uh, sad you can't get over these theme, uh, especially in collect. Oh, 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 the like uh, the creator centric books that that always puts you in a corner of like, what are we gonna do with these orphan issues? Yeah. Marvel has done the same thing. Yeah, and they realized it. They were like, okay. What are we gonna do with these orphan issues? Which is why I always try to sneak in, like, hey, can you all add this? If it's not creator centric, we're what what missing what a complete part out of flash mm -hmm. before John's does Barry too. That's actually okay. been collected though. At least those have been collected. That's the what, what is it called? Flash. Uh, uh what it, it was not very good, but I I, 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 I Guggenheim I, Flash, baby. <laughs> I was kidding. Not even. No, I wasn't setting him up for a joke. I was carrying a conversation. <laughs> I never know. <laughs> See, Omar, your reputation. Fastest man alive. Thank you so much. Grr, Fastest. nine. That's what it was called. It's only 12 issues. Um, my <laughs> reputation <laughs> won't even allow you to trust your questions. My wife says the same thing. She says I deliver every word the same. So she never knows when I'm being sarcastic or when I'm being serious. <laughs> That will be my downfall. Batman Volume <laughs> 2, I Am Suicide. Hey, this is the run that actually um, I was thinking, oh, this Tom King guy is all right, because I did not like the first run. What was it called? Goth I'm, I am I Gotham. Am Gotham. I, am Gotham. Yeah. I was not a fan of that, but I like this. I was. I'm glad I you enjoyed it. The buddy. whole run. The whole thing, huh? Okay. Yep. Um, I on issue. that hill. Okay, you. I love. I know nobody is killing you, Jake. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I agree with with Jake. What, what did, did Jake, Jake say? Honestly, give, me, give me a whole run of just those double date issues, like those. Oh were, yeah, those were, that yeah, was the, my favorite part the, of the whole run. Best. That was the best. Uh, why do Marvel and DC feel it necessary to do creator centric omnis in the first place? Since the creator's name really that big of a seller. Personally, I think the characters themselves are the biggest straw. I uh. Yes, I think a lot of creators definitely draw people in. You got creators like Jim Lee, you got creators like Jeff Johns or Chris Claremont, uh, John Byrne. If it has their name, they usually sell well. Um, and honestly, a lot of us remember some runs, right? Like the Garth Ennis run on Hellblazer, uh, the John Byrne run on Fantastic Four, the Jonathan Hickman run on Fantastic Four. So there are a few. I'll be honest with you, DJ. Uh, there, are, I'm an X Men guy. I will, I will forever read X Men. I've compared X Men to an abusive relationship, where every <laughs> once in a while they come in with a new recipe, and I'm like, "Oh, you learn 
you learn how to make a new grilled cheese a new way. I'm in. I'm back, baby. And then they slammed the door shut on me, and I forgot why I left in the first place. <laughs> but I'm not, you know, I'm not much of a Captain America guy. But I love me some Mark Grunewald, Captain America, and I like, and I really love uh, Ed Brubaker. So maybe there are people like me that are like, I typically don't collect this character, but well, I'm here on Tom King, but I love Tom King, and I'll buy that Tom King Batman. I hope that helps answer. Maybe that's why publishers do that. Yeah, but Captain America wasn't mar marketed as Captain America by Brubaker. It was just his run. And so nothing was left out. If you... Uh... And same with like uh, the Mark Wade run on Captain America. I Those are the only two Captain Americas I have. The Omnis? Okay. Yeah. I really um, thought they were marketed. Like his name is on the spine. Well, like, yeah, same more. with Daredevil. Um, yeah, but that's Daredevil by Ed Brubaker. I I feel like what he's saying is you could put the create the main creator's name on the spine and still just complete the full run, right? Like, that's, well, yeah, that would it. would be preferable. Like I'm looking at Wolverine and I don't see any creator's names on the spine, but if you threw in a Wolverine by Mark Silvestri, I think that would sell really well. Or you see, like Wolverine by Mark Miller. Yeah, maybe I'm, their I'm names. Have I, do, I do think creator recognition is partly important, just because it gets well. If someone is already like highly known or incredibly recognizable, it will draw people to buy those books more oh, than yeah, if it was absolutely. just an, an anonymous. Oh, there's here's a, a random Amazing Spider-Man or a Wonder Woman mm -hmm. omnibus. Throw it out in the wild. Hope people buy it. This is why indie and manga are better. Never miss an issue, except for the ones that are out of print. Go find me all of my bazaara, Josh, and then come back to the stream. Manga. I feel like what's oh. hard about what's hard about character specific omnis is because you imagine going to the store and seeing Batman Volume Seven. If you haven't read one through six, you feel like you can't jump into it, you know. But so I'm down for putting the creators names on it, but just include things that the you know include the full run. That uh, and some people don't want the full run, right? Like I remember, I remember there were there was a little bit of backlash with uh, Excalibur when I asked Marvel to change it to a volume one. It was originally supposed to be by Alan Davis and Chris Claremont, and uh, somebody copied some things in a, in uh, a particular forum that I won't name here uh, that were bashing me for even suggesting that. And the reasoning was, and I get it, is that they only wanted the Chris Claremont and Alan Davis issues. They didn't want anything in between because. Granted, some of those Badger issues were pretty bad, um, or the Scott Lobdell issues. But I yeah. think for the most part, most people that are buying hundred to hundred and fifty dollar books, they're completest. Yeah. More so than I'm just gonna buy a random book by said creator. But That's I don't know. I don't see the numbers. That forum. Uh, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know what this is. A huge book for fourteen dollars and ninety nine cents. That might be wrong. Uh, not on Dom's part. That might be the catalog's part that is wrong. Um, because this collects a lot of Scooby-Doo. I want a Scooby-Doo omnibus. We all do. All right, Jess. Oh, How I didn't excited even... are you for this, buddy? <laughs> I didn't know this was out of print. Uh, uh, Batman. I... What, uh, has it come out before? I thought this was yeah. new. Okay. Yeah, I have it. Uh, awesome. There's volumes. There's only volumes one and two right now. The Silver Age. They need to keep going. Um, I don't. I don't think they're out of the fifties yet. And it. They could easily take it up to 1968 when Neil Adams started doing the covers and the interiors for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it. I mean, I, it, <laughs> it's Silver Age, but it's actually a little bit more interesting than the individual. Superman and Batman, they get, but it is so it's very silver agey, um, which is why I like it. But, uh, hey, <laughs> what's up, nerds? Just talking, um, to <laughs> Just talking to my guest. Uh, thank you, Matt, for the super chat. Creator centric runs a puts more money in the pockets of creators. This is true. Uh, in an unpaid and underpaid industry, B, creators have a complete story arc. So there's a beginning, middle, and end. Unless you're John Byrne and you just like piss everybody off and you just walk away. <laughs> but yes, really. 
so yeah, tell me on tell me on some of the stories that are in here, Jess. What well, makes this so so awesome? Besides this amazing grasshopper game, game in it. I always hear Jess mention the Silver Age grasshopper game. <laughs> oh gosh, I thought you fell, dude. Okay. No, I went to get the book. Um, okay. It's got uh, Batwoman, Lex Luthor, Batman, Mixic Alien Threats. It's uh, Luthor and uh, Joker team up and have a Joker car. I, it, it's very Silver Agey. So I, I don't know that anybody. Um, you're gonna. It's gonna be uh, a book for for people that don't mind the, the the kind of nonsense that it was it was just it was they were just fun one and done stories um you know no long arcs or anything that didn't start taking place until like the mid to late 60s atomic beyond is saying silver age world's finest is beyond bonkers he's not wrong <laughs> he or she but that is a cute dog um Massive. yeah I, hell, it, of, it, hell of a creators though yeah, it and it's um, it's the it, I think it's an important book because it shows DC in in its early in its infancy, um, when they thought of putting these two guys together. But I, you know, it mm -hmm. I, I have a hard time. Can I? There's no way I would even try to convince a modern reader to try Silver Age. Uh, except for Silver Age Superman number one that just came out, which of course is going to be great. Um, uh, it is great. Uh, <laughs> I've been reading it, Jess. No, <laughs> no, no, no lie. For the last two and a half, three weeks now, <laughs> I need because um, people are like, "When are you going to do your overview on it?" And I'm like, "I don't think you guys realize DC doesn't send me books. I have to like get a day of and 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 read it." Oh my gosh! <laughs> It's, it's okay. First of all, there are some couple fun stories in there. It's so dense at times, um, uh, and a lot different than Marvel Silver Age. Yeah, I, I always forget that. I always forget how different the approach was in comic books between Marvel and DC at that time. Well, yeah, that's why Marvel was such a game changer at the time because uh, DC continued to put these out while Marvel went a completely different way. Mm -hmm. Um, but I can you know that that superman silver age is pure a big glob of nostalgia for me that i'm going to get high on and i <laughs> there's just i can't i understand what you're going through trying to read it um well it's i'm just not, trying to you know i'm just trying to do it justice i just want to make sure i got the stories covered and the focus on the art <laughs> but i mean when i do overviews i always take myself out of the equation i never say oh god this story took me eight years to read it's awful <laughs> i'll buy it i know i know i'm i had with with bar i uh went through my stacks of shame and we picked out books and one of them was detective chimp that i was really <laughs> excited about oh actually those were fun they were fun but they took fun. me a a long time to read. Even it's I struggled fun. with it. It's one thin book, dude. It's I'm not getting, as big as this. Um, I'm, I'm getting know, nervous. It's, it's, I have I, Superman Silver Age to start this weekend. And I'm getting nervous now from Omar's description might, of it. You know, I mean, you might not either. <laughs> I, I need it. I need palate cleansers in between. I'm like, give me something modern in between <laughs> issues. Because you Jake, feel like you, you, you have went through an experience reading one issue after another because they were, I mean, you are getting definitely the best bang for your buck getting these stories. They're a little dense and dialogue heavy and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but yeah, it's just, I, I was just saying, uh, Jake, I told you not to get silver age Superman and you still said, let's do a show <laughs> on it. And you got yes, it. It's so going to be so on. fun because I'm like, you know, I'm not known for being like a classic reader. I feel like I'm known being more of a modern DC fan. So right. I feel like I'll have a fun perspective on it. You know, the more you uh, tell those, me it's not for me, the more I want to make it for me. <laughs> that's those gonna be work. DC make finals work. are coming still coming out in November. Uh, the catalog is not complete. The catalog is not complete. That's what's going on. Uh, Omar is a child. What? What? Josh, I was reading Silver Age comics while you were trying to figure out the internet and looking up boobies. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Bat one, Batwoman Ooh. LG, 2024 nice. edition. This is a phenomenal story. Beautiful artwork here by J.H. Williams III. I would say some of his best. 
yeah. outside of uh, that Sandman book and Promethea. So I'm glad this is coming back in print. I feel like uh, this is a landmark book for Batman. I agree. It's just a landmark book in general. I mean, yeah. it's incredibly well crafted. The story is amazing. The art is absolutely phenomenal mm-hmm. and well structured. I mean, it hits all the notes just as yeah. a regular book in in general. Why is and, DC constantly moving between different styles for these gold and silver and bronze omnis? Um, I, I think they have new people working there. I mean, obviously, you can't get another Darwin Cook cover, right? That's not going to happen. Yeah, I don't think he. I, I don't even if he left things behind, you're eventually going to run out of them. Uh, but yeah, they they don't have the same people in their department as they used to. So they may still have the template. Maybe somebody can't figure it out. I really don't know. Or maybe they just want to revamp it and try to sell it as a new. Um, Robin and Son of Batman by Patrick Gleason. I'm I'm so I'm the so hyped for this. The yeah. Dude, this is a good series. It is Great like series. it's it's a uh, it's right place in between the new 52 run of batman and robin and all the stuff before rebirth hits and it's a wonderful standalone story mm-hmm. with robin continuing to come in with grips at the world some new characters are introduced who are important to a supporting cast and his mythos and of course drawn by my favorite artist ever which i have no idea if it's a hot take or not but no, i love patrick leeson <laughs> i love him as an artist love him as a writer too uh he had a he had a story in amazing mm-hmm. spider-man beyond that i really liked which was a standalone issue that he wrote andrew so i'm, I'm always going to be signed up for anything pat and i'm really happy that they're actually coming out with this in a deluxe format which i did not anticipate when uh, i wished for it like four years ago when i read it tom I that's not that. a hot take your favorite artist is your favorite artist mm-hmm. that's you don't have to defend that you like who you like <laughs> That's right. You like who you like. Um, this was one. There, so, man, sometimes, you know, I get as frustrated with everybody, like everybody else with, oh, come on, DC, what are you doing? And then other <laughs> times I'm like, oh, my God, DC, what are you doing? <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Love it. I did not expect this to come out in the deluxe edition. Uh, there have been like two standard size hardcovers and two yeah. paperbacks released. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm all here for that. He's an amazing artist. Unfortunately, I haven't seen him like do as much with Spider Man. But then again, I am talking about the Amazing Spider Man run. Yeah. I want. I, I really love that era of Gleason when he was like, "Here, here, here. Let me, let me plot this. Let me, let me write this. Let me co-write this." And I don't see that it happening in Spider Man as much. So this era was freaking awesome. I just miss Pat being everywhere on on books uh, because, of course, you had Superman. Uh, with him in Rebirth, and right before he made the, the jump over to Marvel, he drew the first arc of Bendis's Young Justice uh, right before he got on to ASM. So I hope to get more Pat someday. Hot take. You can like what you like. Hottest of takes now. That's yes. very true. Let me add one more thing to that. You can like whoever you like as long as you don't share it on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't go or on social, Twitter. Or social media. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and wow. holy crap, all four by end of year of uh, Green Lantern. So this is the last one that needs to be reprinted. My favorite artist is uh, Liefeld, inked by Omar. Omar does inking. <laughs> Do you I, think I, after, have inked, I have inked before. Uh, uncredited. Do you think after this one we'll get a volume five, or are they starting back over at volume one and we'll just perpetually be getting one through four? Uh, no, I think I, I have I have faith in the it, just looking at this catalog that they saw that these books are high in demand and they wanted to reprint them and can, and then probably continue them. Yeah. I think it'll be like young justice and books that we think that they've forgotten about and they've given us this. And what I hope we get is like, even though not an omnibus, but I like to see red lanterns or, uh, Larf, uh, Larfrey's, uh, in this, in this format, in this thick format, that would be cool. Those those Larfrey's trades are way out of print. They need to be reprinted, and mm-hmm. I don't and know. And there's not that many of them. Mm-hmm. There was two of them, I think. There two, yeah, there was two. It was a twelve issue series. And Sinestro, Sinestro mm-hmm. also needs. Yeah, to be Sinestro one. by Colin Bunn. It's Colin Bunn, yeah. Okay, well, um, let's not get crazy. <laughs> 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 
Warren actually liked something about 10 things ago, which I was shocked at. <laughs> I was shocked that we had agreed on something the other day. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. I, I had to stop. Yes, Sinestro <laughs> was so freaking yeah. good. It was great. It was great. But yeah, collect collect Red Lanterns, collect Celeste, Sinestro and Larflees and just stick it in an Omni. Well, yeah, well we, the, we dropped that. It's trades now. Uh, or Compendium. I, I want Red Lanterns and an yeah, Omni. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, I had a custom bound of all my trades, but people deserve to read that because it's it's out of... I, almost all of them are way out of print. I was disappointed some of the Sinestro Wars were left out of those one shot. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Sinestro War, there's two of them that have never been collected in an omnibus format. Both out of the... I was hoping the Green Lantern Corps would pick up the ones that were not collected in the Jeff Johns omnibus. Uh, but I did. I still have my hardcover, so I told people what to get. These she's showing up for those late '80s and early '90s kids. Uh, there's a Silver Age book in here, so some of those '50s kids as well, which is nice. Here's a big one that people oh. want, and mm -hmm. I know uh, Jess and I have talked about this. He loves this series. I was really surprised that. I uh, it just shows how different people's tastes are. I was surprised that you didn't like this. Didn't dig it. Not yeah. my cup of tea. And no. I'm usually for these. And I'm usually one of these people that likes stories like The Sopranos or Breaking Bad, where you're rooting for the bad guy, right? And yeah. You see a lot of that in here. I don't know. It just never clicked with me. I, I did yeah. dig the artwork, though. The artwork is phenomenal. Um, but I'm really happy for the people that uh, that love the story. It is finally coming out in omnibus format. Uh, it is going to be split up into two Omnis just based on, yeah, the page count and, of course, the price. Um, so glad that it's coming out because those five, yeah, there were five deluxe hardcovers I've been out of print for a long time. Whoa. What? Yeah, they have been out of print, especially number two. That price point cannot be right. 752 well, pages for 175 No, $75. Oh, $75. oh it's 75 Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Good for them. <laughs> At first, I was outraged. Now I'm happy. <laughs> this is the rawest DC book I've ever read. Mm -hmm. It is a hundred percent raw, and it felt real. And I, I know Jason Aaron caught grief from uh, indigenous people about it, but mm -hmm. wow, this, mm -hmm. this is some. I, I, up it, really it's, it's I agree not, with you. I agree with Give away what the plot is. I just know that people. Mm -hmm. If they've never read it, they're in for a treat. I, I agree with Jess. People really 100%. like it. Dom, I need to get you on my show. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh -uh. He's got a contract already, buddy. It's true. How are you stealing what? my people? Damn it. No, I'll I'll sneak it through Chris. But Chris ain't his maker. <laughs> but he is my boss. Mind. Neither am I. He's his boss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I love I actually really like Jason Aaron. Like I, I really enjoy his writing. This was just not to yeah. me, it was like you know, it, it's not Avengers, like it's not bad, <laughs> like Avengers. <laughs> I'm just not the biggest fan of it, and that's okay. I don't have to like every vertigo title. I like no, hundred no. bullets, and there are plenty of people that don't like hundred bullets. And I, I think it's good that we can talk about it, and it's just not your thing, and I respect that completely. Not every oh, book man. is for everybody. Thank you, buddy. Uh, I, yeah, James, my, don't flip that. James, don't flip that at all. Definitely, he was being sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely go and check it out and, and you know, judge for yourself because there's tons, and I mean tons of people that love this book. So, yeah, it's great. Superman Volume One Supercore, uh, collecting the first five issues of the 2023 series. This is the series that Kenny told me that I need to read. It is. Freaking phenomenal. I agree I, with Kenny. Isn't this already out in hardcover? <laughs> it, it is. is. And then oh, they went to hardcover. trade paperbacks as soon as volume two hit because of oh, the of DC what? stuff. It's oh wait a second. What? It's oh. yeah, they volume, one, volume oh, yeah, one was they a standard them hardcover. Out. Then they switched it up completely. So now this is for compensation for all the people wanted and trade paperback all the way or consistent uh, whatever you want to call I feel it. like I'm going to I feel like as soon as I buy this they're going to come out with the standard size of volume 2 just to screw <laughs> DC or deluxe, compensates a this. Of Oh here here you go Josh up at the very top sorry I should have mentioned this 
uh, is where you're going to see the release or ETAs. Sorry, because that that could also change. That's a good question. Mm, gosh, I'm disappointed hearing that news about Super. I'm sorry, Jess. <laughs> Uh, I'll get it anyway, but <laughs> I'm still bitter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Ooh, continuing the Tom King's. I love that cover. Wow! Yeah, and, dude. Daniel Samper on the art for this series has been absolutely killing it. Like every yeah. single issue of the book is gorgeous. Like I could frame it up on a wall. Like it has been awesome in that department. Mm. And to make more on colors. Um, oh my gosh. When does the first book drop? Is it sometime um here in the next couple of months, right? Yes. And it is a it's trade. A, it's not it's hard. a trade. Oh, mm. good, good, good. Oh. I feel What's like the... standard size hardcovers was me saying, okay, I'm just happy DC's putting out the books as a hardcover. Yeah. And now yeah. with trades, I'm even less excited about it. Well, <laughs> I, I know for Marvel, getting rid of the trades or the hardcovers was kind of a um, – we're not making enough. So let's just focus on trade paperbacks. We have to focus on one thing. We can't – you know, we're not a, a a book book market where the book market is usually like, here's a hardcover, six months to nine months later, here's your soft cover. Let's just focus on one thing because we're not making as much money or we're probably losing money on these standard size hardcovers, the premium hardcovers that they were releasing. And maybe DC, because remember, DC has done this before. DC has done standard size hardcovers, especially during the new 52 era, and then dropped them midway through some of the series. Yeah. With the exception, I think, of the only one that made it all the way through, if I'm not mistaken, was like Scott Snyder's Batman. Mm -hmm. And I have and all the now, hardcovers. And then now they brought it back during the dawn of these, or right before the dawn. What was it? The DC Universe. Just bring, yeah. bring back the Rebirth Deluxe Editions. Those were my favorite. I love oh them. yeah, they, they they still have to continue some of them too. Like Green Arrow got dropped. Um, Flash got Flash dropped. by Williamson got dropped. There are a lot of runs in in that era of DC Comics that just stopped the oversized hardcovers for whatever reason. Uh, I'm I'm gonna get this anyway <laughs> because I'm dying to read Tom King and see this great art that Dom's talking about. And you're going to love it, Jess. Like I kid you not. Like it is absolutely gorgeous. Like oh. every single part of it. Like there hasn't been one part of the book where I'm just like, oh, the art's fun. No, man. Like Daniel Semper might have been my favorite artist overall from last year. That's contending with guys like same company like Dan Mora. Like it's insane. Wow. Okay. Really? I'm super, super and more. Excited. Okay. Now you're hyping it up there, Dom. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Dude, it's really good. Yeah. yeah I know, I know that there are people that are not fans of standard size hardcovers. And I know there are, I have viewers that are fans of standard size hardcovers. Um, I've never really been a fan. Like to me, a hardcover, I would I, I need it to be in oversized format. Uh because I think that's just the way my brain works. I don't know why. Uh, yet for some reason, Immortal Thor Volume One. We were just talking about this earlier. Why not make it a hardcover for that price? Because then it would be thirty-four dollars and ninety-nine cents. And again, I don't know why some books are twenty-nine ninety-nine. I don't know why some books are seventeen ninety-nine. All I can tell you is that book was printed in the U.S. That's it. That's all I know. Yeah, I'll definitely buy this because I'll buy anything Tom King does. But yeah, um, this is one of my favorite Grant Morrison stories. Uh, and it is back to print in trade paperback format. If you've never read it, it's it's such a freaking awesome book. I love it. And Sean Murphy's artwork is so good. Even sneaking in some characters that aren't by DC as toys. That was a nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's all about a kid that suffers from diabetes. I'm sorry, diabetes. Oh, you spoiled it. Yeah, not just the spoilers in the very beginning, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the spoiler is what happens later. The God pitch the um, and he needs his insulin when his mom leaves him at home. And it's a journey. It's a magical journey. And it's so good if you have one of the one of the more accessible Grant Morrison stories. Everybody, oh, yeah, this is like this is right there with like uh claws as far claws, as like, yeah, the no overthinking it. There's no the gods, yeah. there's nothing crazy going on. <laughs> oh, it's a gateway uh, to Grant Morrison. Yeah, I dig it. It's good. Um, we got Sean Mor uh, Murphy on art too. So for all the people who love his art, it's also a yeah. plus there. Yeah, I think that cover, but Ramon Perez, huh? 
So mm-hmm. this is the Flash Volume Two until time stands still. Oh, this is Cy Spurrier. This is, uh, mm-hmm. Cy Spurrier, I didn't even. Cy know Spurrier you. has also been kicking butt on on Flash Two, and there's a lot of brand new, different horror type concepts that he's bringing in the run uh, compared to what you had before when Jeremy Adams was writing. Lots of different uh, so uh, status quo changes for for flash but i've been loving the book it's been a not even a nice like it's a it's been better than a breath of fresh air like it's awesome really yes i know people really like i haven't read the the last half of uh mm-hmm. joshua williamson's art but i know people really liked it so my question to you is i love size barrier mm-hmm. but i completely understand why people don't like size barrier what like Dude, come on! He's not the easiest guy to read. You've read his stuff. You like, especially his indie stuff, right? He's like, I don't give a crap if people under don't understand the language I just made up. Keep up! Come on! You gotta be as smart as I am. I, I love, I love that. that. I, I I love that. Uh, I love but, his stuff. Uh, is this is this Barry Allen or Wally or who? It's Wally. What? It's Wally. Okay. Not to be confused with Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> right. Today I learned the difference. <laughs> um. But is it okay? So compared to like, I know you've read Nightcrawlers, and I know you've read like Legion of X and Way of X. Is it more like that, or is it more like his? Uh, oh, what was it? His Hellblazer, or his? I don't know if you read his indie stuff like Rush or. Uh, I've read, yeah, I've read. What was the tower? What was the book? The the tower, Jazz. Oh, uh, I dug that book. Spire, the Spire. Yeah, but they they had their own language, so it was a little hard to read. Oh, it was so good. That's one of my favorite books ever. And loved Coda, it, loved it. Coda um, was but, amazing. But I will tell you this: like when uh, when Peter and I were doing the X Men stream, uh, announcing the new X Men titles and stuff, that was a lot of fun. By the way, people in the chat were like, "Oh, Size Burrier on uh, Legion of X was so confusing to read," and I can see that. I can see him being because he doesn't write. In a linear fashion. Yeah. Okay. So my question is, how is this Dom like compared to like his other stuff? Is it easy to follow, or is it? It's a lot easier to follow than some of his other titles, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Say no more. I was curious how his run. I'm, I'm glad to see him on a superhero book. That's cool. Way to go for Sai. I will. I will say like under like um I guess uh no. I lost my train of thought. Just go read it. <laughs> go read I'll get it, it okay. anyway. Size Barrier is an immediate buy for me. Dark Knights of Steel, baby, volume two. This is great. It's so awesome and ridiculous. So I love it. <laughs> so good. Uh, it's exactly what you think it is. That's Look at that cover. That's exactly what you get out of this book. And Death and Return of Superman. I love that you wrote To Be Determined. But I'm pretty sure it's just it's the death. Just yeah. the death. Wait, okay, wait, no, no, they did write and return. So it's Superman 75 and something else. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> uh, but the question is, will I be getting this? Because I have just about every incarnation of this <laughs> stupid story. It's not even my favorite story. But it's the sometimes it's like all DC can think of when they think of Superman when they want to print out something. It's like, hey, remember when he died? Here's like ten different versions of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, all day. This is another one that you and I did not agree on, Jess. I was like, oh my god, I'm so excited for this, and you were like, eh, not my cup of tea. But I, I respect what, that. You know, I I have been rethinking that because I did I did read this in singles. And I didn't, I didn't dislike it. So Mm -hmm. I, I think that your excitement may have leaked in uh, my brain and I may pick this up. Um, Here's something that I didn't like, I, you know, uh, on my Saturday stream, somebody asked, what do I think of people that have problems with the character of Deathstroke? And I know I've never been asked that, nor have I ever thought about it. Um, but I had to take a step back and realize he is a very problematic character during this time, uh, especially because of the whole Judas contract storyline. And if you haven't read it, I, just, I don't want to spoil what happens in it. But uh, I, I never thought about it. But the way that Wolfman writes him in this particular series it is a little bit different than he is portrayed 
in the Judas contract or those early appearances by Deathstroke. Uh, he is a really smart character and there are reasons why he's able to take on some of the big guns of DC, even though he's not a super powered, you know, character like Parasite. He's kind of in a way, like not as smart as Lex Luthor, but he is really intelligent and just so freaking awesome. <laughs> and I've always been a fan of that design. That design is so iconic. With the boots. I love his mask, man. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Mike yeah. Zek did that cover. Uh, this stuff is so good. I think there's enough for three Omnis, honestly, to collect everything. This is uh, the 90s era of Deathstroke the Terminator. So a whole issue in here with uh, Superman. It's it's great. How does it compare to Christopher Priest run, which I've never read but want to? Um, they're they're so different because that era is the rebirth era where they've taken away some of the stuff. This it's your it's full in coming in from the presses of New Teen Titans. I'm trying to think of this era. You know what? I think this is probably nostalgia talking. Um, Priest got the voice right and was able to deal with a character that had all those issues going on. But I got to go with this one. It, it's It was what I read when I was kind of branching out to other comics outside of just the X-Men and Marvel comics. And I wanted to read more DC and the issue number one was coming out. So I started collecting them. Because I thought, oh, it's so cool. This is like if Magneto had his own comic, then you know, years later he finally did. But <laughs> it was cool. I, I dig it. So I gotta go with this one. Um, this is another one that's a big surprise because they're releasing these in trades. Uh, but this is Batman by Tom King, book one, and it collects Batman one through six, nine through twenty-two. The Flash 21 through 22 and Batman Elmer Fudd special. Which is great. <laughs> it is a I good agree. story. It's I about 560 agree. pages and $49.99. They're really um, running through every format other than Omni for this run. And like, 7 and 8 is the crossover, the Night of the Monster Men, right? Yeah, the, it's that one is not in here. Yeah. Which is okay. But it's in, the, it's in the Thin Trades. It's in the Thin Maybe. Trades, and it's in the James Tynan uh, Detective Comics Omni, but it's not... And I'm sure it'll be in this Omnibus, too. What? I, wait. Go ahead, didn't, he, didn't... No, no, those were the small trades. Okay, so... Sure including the button in this. This, this nice. is, Yeah, button this is, is in here. Yeah, this is something okay. new. This is something oh, new. Okay. It's never been released in a thicky. Like okay. That. It's been released in small trades and deluxe editions. That's what um, we. That's what you were showing earlier with I am Gotham and I am. Those Suicide. were the the thin trade paperbacks. Yeah, okay. So this is a big, print. thick collection. Okay, but, but like I said, because it's between a thicky and a compendium, like what's what separates the two? Me saying thicky <laughs> instead of compendium. Uh, <laughs> if it doesn't have a compendium title or like a logo on it, maybe it's like a, an epic collection, complete collection, but. They don't call it that, so this okay. yeah, they call it yeah, saga, I think. Yeah. Price point usually compendiums are what 59.99, yeah, and they have the compendium. Maybe it's actually, you know, what probably, uh, Jake, it might be the uh, paper stock too, because compendiums mm. do have a little bit different paper stock than trades do. Love that cover by David Finch, mm. Superman volume three. Not digging that cover though, Justice Reborn, and no offense to Warren Lowe, Lau. Not sure uh, what else he's done, but yeah. Not sure how I feel about that cover. <laughs> Collecting issues 16 through 21. The funny part about this trade paperback is the issue. None of the issues for this have been solicited, but they put the trade paperback up on PRH before the regular issues were solicited or are, are going to be solicited. Oh, uh, okay. So not t totally solicited. Hmm. There you go, Jess. Tell yeah. Me about, I know you've read this already, right? Because this has been released already, has it not? You hiding from the stream? <laughs> <laughs> it's been released in a hardcover. No, I'm showing my Harley shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is our first Happy. confirmation that Joshua Williamson is still on the book. Good. 
Good. I, I haven't read it. Enjoying his book. I have this, but I haven't read it yet. Omar, not digging this cover, but no offense. I, I can, like, there are covers by Jim Lee I don't dig. I just didn't dig that one. Uh, go on, Jess. Tell me. Oh, I, ha I haven't read it yet. I'm excited. Oh, you haven't for read it, it yet? No, I haven't read it yet. Um, okay. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad this is coming out in the deluxe edition. The Darwin Cook one? No, this is the Tim Cell book. But okay, yes, it is written by Darwin Cook, but it's okay. like this. There on and there wasn't enough collaboration between both of them. It could have been so much more. Darwin Cook and Tim Cell, and both are unfortunately no longer with us. Mm. And I just realized that, damn, you're right. Uh, Superman Confidential one through five and eleven. Oh, it's such a good story and a beautiful artwork. Yeah, I can't I wait to see. Some, uh, I know Jordan, Jordan likes you do have to a pick lot. it up. It's awesome. Jordan always lords it over me. I never grabbed it. <laughs> it's a classic. Mm -hmm. I never picked it up in deluxe, so I'm, I'm I want to get it. And that's it for the catalog. Thank you for joining us. Hit that smash Ooh. button, smash that like button on the way out. No, I'm just kidding. You can stay, and we can talk about our favorite books here. Uh, but before I do, don't forget to check out WaltzComicShop.com. They're based out of G Berlin, Germany. And they have flat shipping rates for all EU countries for 12 euros. And if you tell them near me condition, all one word at the checkout, sent you their way, you get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order of over 40 euros or more. That's WaltzComicShop.com, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ting. I don't know if my wife is still in the chat. Um, how do you guys reason that they're doing Bronze Age Green Lantern with the green arrow green lantern omni but somehow skipped ahead 10 years for flash to do the lobes omni i thought that was an odd choice hmm <laughs> no anthony don't start like that we this isn't the full catalog the full catalog will be out here in the next couple of weeks let me stop sharing i'll go back to the beginning uh, so that's we're just looking at a big preview uh i don't know how many more it, it, books that will be added to the final catalog honestly but just looking at a small taste of what is to come melanie disappeared a long time ago apparently she had kids to teach oh i thought they were still watching my show uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the normal june solicited video for dc come out tomorrow then no we did that already didn't we we june? did yeah we did that two <laughs> i guess uh never mind we did that yeah <laughs> we did that last week there, there's some internal shuffling going around at DC Comics, so yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's all I will say. Hopefully, uh, yeah, I would love to see Sandman Mystery Compendium Volume Two, couple more Omnis, couple more Absolute Editions, uh, and see the actual catalog with DC's finest, the first four books that have already been announced. And what else? What else? Um, so out of this catalog, gentlemen, and anybody else that's watching, what's the one book you're most excited for? What's the book that took you by surprise? They don't have to be the same book. I'm I'm um, stoked for the Colt Deluxe Edition. Um tell me why. One, tell me why. Uh, that, honestly, because every time I I haven't read it, and every time I do a Batman video or I do a top 10 list or something, someone in the com I have like six people in the comments go. <laughs> Oh, you should read the cult. You should read the cult. It's fantastic, and it's never been super attainable for me. Um, I guess I could read it digitally, but um, it's. I don't think it's been in print in a long time. So I'm excited that it's coming back as a deluxe edition, which I like even better. So it, it's. You know, I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's a. Uh, it's one of the best. Uh, every time I do a top Batman video, people ask me why I don't put it in there, and I said because it's not one of my top ten. <laughs> That's why I'm glad that it's one of yours, though. That's awesome. I don't think a deluxe edition is going to change that, but it is freaking amazing. There's a lot of, I mean, that says a lot about the characters, right? It says a lot about the characters if you can think about like it's hard to come up with a top 10 story for Batman because there's just been so many good ones. Mm -hmm. Um, what about you, Dom? What's the book you're most excited for? I am very very excited to get into the hellblazer mm. omnibus whenever that decides to get printed or what's mm -hmm. actually in it because i feel like that's like i've read a lot of vertigo but 
I've never fully embellished myself into the Hellblazer material, even though I know who the creators are on it and I know all the stuff that happens in it. I've never actually properly read the run. I've read the Swamp Thing issues that are supposedly in here, but I've never read Hellblazer proper. So oh, this is going okay. to be it's a wild trip for me that I'm very, very excited for. Mm. Oh, you are in for a treat. My... Have you read the Garth Ennis stuff? I, I have. I know what happens in it. I know all the creators on it, but I don't know. I have not read. Oh, the... that's that's good. That's that's that. It'll make it better. Like seriously, this is really good too. Don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I think it might make. I, I can't wait to get both. I'm. I. I it... Now, uh, the question is, would it stop you from getting this if they did make the page count smaller and make it into two omnis instead of one? If they're both like 75 or 100 bucks, if they're both 75 bucks, I don't think I'd mind it. Okay. I'm always curious if that's what would stop somebody if they don't make a big uh, omnibus because I know a lot of people really like it, but I also know and it's also interesting got, to see comments. You also, gotta, you also gotta remember, Omar, I have a lot more limited shelf space than you three. Gentlemen. You need to move to Kentucky, man. Get yourself a basement. <laughs> We don't have those in California. I know you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no um, basements allowed. No what basement. about you, Jess? What are you most excited for, buddy? Uh, I, I have to go with the Triangle Era for Superman. Um, just because I think uh, I already said it gives me hope that they're going to start. Um, they have so much Superman stuff that they just haven't collected. And starting with this and moving their way up uh, I, is very exciting. So this is the one I'm most excited about. The most I, one I was most surprised about. Uh, mm -hmm. um, I guess maybe the Stephanie Brown one. It's a good yeah. one. That's a good answer. That's yeah. a great, great run. Yeah. Um, I'm with you, man. I have been waiting for this damn book. It's not John Byrne. I don't care, but it's a good start. I'm here for that. I, I, I'm glad we agree. This is such an iconic era of Superman. And here's the thing. I'm not even going to lie to you people. It's not the greatest Superman stories, but they're, they were my childhood. So of course I want this. And, yeah. you know, don't expect like, I want to say even exile was a little bit. Well, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. This, this does have, they saved Luther's brain. Doesn't it? And they, it does, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I what I don't judge about that story. It's um, in it's it's in the omnibus. But, okay, I actually really like Time and Time Again. I so that's that's, that's not a, a hokey story. That is a fun story. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm here for this one. I I I love Crisis of Krypton, Crimson Kryptonite. Oh, Kryptonite. <laughs> yes, yes. I always yes. dug that story. Um, I hope they reprint Exile someday. That's that's the one modern Superman omnibus I missed out on. Oh, Which is one? it out of print? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been oh, out of print Exile? for a while. Yeah. Exile's been. Oh, out. has it? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll put it up on our reprint poll. Thoughts and prayers. See what happens. Oh, and <laughs> yeah, the chat is mentioning the, that Swamp Thing Rick Veitch uh, collection. That's what I'm most surprised about. I, I I'm surprised and excited for that. Because yeah, we're all we're all hoping for that 88th issue will be finally out. Um, um, it'll be interesting to see what they do. And and I think you said, or you and Riley said that the trades I have don't have the mm -hmm. complete story, whereas this one will. So I'm excited for this too. Uh, no, they do not have the complete story. Uh, no, this is not the whole catalog. This is an early look at the catalog. But I mean, between this and the solicitations that I've been doing for the last couple of months, we're almost finished with this catalog. I think they'll probably add some more things by end of next week, if not the following week. And then we'll look at the whole L device catalog. If y'all want to, uh, to see those usually have a little better price. Like, uh, uh well, no, never mind. I take it back. Uh, sometimes they don't fix things. Sometimes the books are still there, even in their solicits that don't have the content, which is just crazy. Uh, yeah. The, the swamp thing book is the one that surprised me the most. I did not see that coming. Mm, because uh, it's, it's book one i hope they keep continuing with it yeah yeah because so, i think the traits i don't think the traits no i think they did make it to like issue number 80 but drunken sailor said the trades go to 82 oh, okay yeah okay 82. so yeah i'm missing a chunk of it then yeah you're in i think i read that this was gonna be an absolute and that's when they were gonna finish it but 
then they 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 pulled out. Honestly, the cult should have been an absolute. Mm, yeah, that, man, that should have been an absolute. Honestly, <laughs> I'm gonna see what the chat is saying here. What <laughs> Thank they, you, Elon. <laughs> what they're saying. Uh, Elon's my guy. I got your watch on, Elon. Thank you for the gift. Did he have to sneak it out of a a war camp? What? Yeah, it was like that scene in Pulp Fiction. Look, somebody oh. <laughs> got sat down. I was just, I was just, I was just me asking, does he got a good story? What a final night, the Lux Edition. Doug, that story is so not good, but I'm there with you, buddy. <laughs> I'm there with you, my friend. Uh, Bronze Age Flash would be early 70s, James. Oh, answering questions. Okay, Batman the Cult. Superman Triangle the years with a DC bullet. Oh, the DC bullet. Yeah. Uh, no absolutes, but the catalog isn't finished yet. Triangle, Superman, still number one. Hellblazer. Hellblazer was on my, my number two, so I'm glad one of you chose it. Uh, since the Alex Toth collection wasn't being released, Scalped only read like four issues. Yeah, happy for all the people that have been wanting that for a long time or the yeah. reprinted. Still hoping for DC Challenge, JLA 80 stories, not in trade or an omniprint. Mark Wade Flash 2 was very comforting to see finally. Despite the issues with the gaps between Omnis, I'm most excited. Oh, yeah. Everything, Where you know, you? All, all the things that might be missing, whatever, not map prop, whatever. I'm so excited for it. Where so does the Grant Morrison it. Deluxe fit in between the Mark Wade Omnis? Uh, I don't know. We don't have a mapping for volume two. We don't two. have a mapping for volume two yet. I, so. I would assume between two It's and like after three? the seventh trade paperback it's in between oh no it would be three yeah then it would be after volume three and four maybe depending on how they map for the cult lost my copy long ago and it's been out of print for a long time and in freaking deluxe too scalped omnibus was the biggest surprise excited for background i'm excited for background i'll get it this time around yes read the cult flash omnibus volume two hellblazer omnibus deathstroke superman triangle Flash Wade, Robin the De- Robin the Lux nice. was a surprise. That was another yeah. big surprise. Most excited for Triangle Years. Uh, let's get a Batman by Starlin omnibus going. Bernie mm. writes it on Batman. Absolutely a grab. Yeah. Robin, son of Batman Deluxe, Green Lantern Core 2, Flash Mark Wade 2, and Batman the Colt. Superman Triangle Years. Oh, finally, Warren and I agree on things. Hell, oh. That's Trojan Hellboy. <laughs> <laughs> Robin the Lux also super good. Batman 66, that's definitely another one that I'm glad nice. that I can print. Superman Triangle Era and Deathstroke. Scooby Doo joking about joking. Batman the Cult Death Manga is also great. Batman the Cult is fantastic. Bought it in issues when it came out. Very underrated. Deathstroke, Omnibus for me, Flash Wave for sure, but Green Lantern Core Volume 2. Excited for almost all the Omnis, but I really hope that H Swamp Thing collection means it's gonna get properly finished yeah i think a lot of us want that to get finished dc were the yeah they were they were they were they were dc black label even though this wasn't the era eh, never mind uh green lantern court <laughs> 2 deathstroke surprisingly they didn't release batman by tom king omnibus oh they know you know they will you know that's gonna At some come. point they will as soon as you buy that first complete collection or that, <laughs> that trade or whatever it is that's when they'll announce it uh, the question is, will we get a third omnibus? Oh, oh no. How? Oh, Rene Montoya, though. That era. That would be cool. We're getting we're getting 52 re, rebranded in another Omni. <laughs> so there's always hope. Superman Triangle, Delano, Hellblazer, Rick Swamp Thing, exciting surprise. Morrison's Animal Man might be most surprising since they still haven't collected the end of the series. No, because the series continue without him. Stephanie Brown, maybe. Wonder Woman by King and Batman the Cult Deluxe. Interested in maybe Flash by Wade. No love for your female characters by female creators, huh? Bar. I am. <laughs> Dom's great. got me way pumped for Wonder Woman. It's good, man. Way he pumped. does that. He does that, man. He's got that. Youth. <laughs> good. Stephanie Brown. Miss something? Oh, it was the fat trade. It's a fat trade, my friend. And I think that is... Oh, there we go. Scalped. I'm... Shook. <laughs> Wait! Go back to that one. <laughs> this one? No! <laughs> Who's the one from Milan? That ah. one, right? No! <laughs> hey, Day-Day. <laughs> what is wrong with you two? 
you rat bastard. Show what Elon said. Who are you talking to? You. Why are you calling me names? <laughs> you better super the uh, the super chat that shit if he wants me to show it. <laughs> That's this is how we run. This is a business, Elon. <laughs> This ain't a gathering of friends. I was hoping for some more absolute super. <laughs> Those will come. I I promise. I, I was hoping for a Trans Metro Volume Three. I feel like I was like trying to wait. You know, they did one and two, and now they're doing one and two again. So, well, they're doing one because it is technically out of print. Um, but we'll see. I'm very excited to own Swamp Thing physically. Been reading it on DC app. These stories don't get enough love, in my opinion. Hopefully, there's more DC's finest in the final catalog. I don't think they're done from. Off the record, from what they've told me, they're they might sneak some more into the catalog. Omar, did you miss Wildcats Compendium? We we talk. I think it's oh, it's because it's been solicited already. That's why we didn't add it no, to the catalog. I, I thought it, it was, was in there. Oh yeah, no, no, no. no oh, you're talking about the not original stuff. Yeah, the Jim oh. Lee stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 okay. But absolute. Oh, yeah, dude. Let me tell you a story mm -hmm. uh, about mm -hmm. that book. So I remember going back and forth. I don't want to spend $125 on this book. It's awful, awful writing. <laughs> and I was on Omnibros at that time. And <laughs> of all people, Gio said, Omar, look at it this way. You're going to spend $125 on a beautiful art book. Dude, I didn't even hesitate. Before he even finished that sentence, I was already checking out. I was like, he's right. <laughs> Justified. Thank you so much. So that's the way that um, I bought it. <laughs> it's a beautiful art book. I'm with Barr. Where are you both? Where list where, where are you all with the female creators on the list? Teeny Howard, Amanda Louise Simonson, Amanda Connor. Is Louise Simonson on here? What the Superman Triangle era? Look at Dom coming in. Oh, I like that, Dom. All right, yes, there you go. Choose one. Okay. Alan Moore's Wildcats in absolute with Travis Charest on art. Oh my gosh. Now you're cooking. Now you're, oh my gosh. Yes. Queen's got, hey, 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 stay focused. <laughs> Teeny Howard to go home. <laughs> Omar, communications with DC better. <laughs> uh, it's, um, I have three contacts at DC if that means anything. Is it better? I guess I have three people ignoring me now instead of just one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm awesome. just being honest. I'm just being uh, honest, and you know, so you know, they might reply back one day. Hi, Maddie. Hi, Bar. Wow, he said three. Oh my gosh, that's three more than we had in the '80s. It's not his fault. It's a start. I wasn't yeah. even in this country when that was happening. <laughs> that good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. We'll see. You know, things could change. And it's not their fault. I mean, I'm sure they're super swamped. I say that as I'm looking at Swamp Thing. Um, let's do a quick little recap. Jill Thompson right there. Call it a day. Oh, Jill Thompson. There thank you. you. Thank you. There you go. Where are you at now, Bar? And a lot of the editors <laughs> are ladies. Thank you very much. And this is a quick recap of what's happening. If you're watching this, if you're driving right now, you're missing out, though. This is nothing but dead air. Hopefully, they're, hopefully they're not, not watching while they're driving. I remember somebody was driving one time. I told them to pull over and hit that like button real quick and then keep on driving because <laughs> I'm a responsible adult like that. <laughs> Wait, the that Mark Wade World's Finest, that's still going to be standard size hardcover, right? They're not yes. they're not going to screw me like yeah, they do it is. Other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, no. that would have up <laughs> that and Nightwing. They need to finish that at Nightwing at least in standard size hardcovers. Elon, I'm gonna be hard super chat. Look at that. He's so sweet. He super stickered me. All right, what do you want to say? You paid a super <laughs> sticker to say, suck it, Omar. Okay, I hope it was worth it. <laughs> no, I will not. I hope it was worth it. <laughs> we need an Omni of World's Finest by Wade. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Let's finish it first, and then we can get an Omnibus. Let him keep writing or, it. So or a good. Kingdom Come Omnibus with all the different sequels. That would be such a disjointed... <laughs> Omnibus. <laughs> we had fever dream of a book. like that before, though. Uh oh, here we go. Look at Bar. I support quality creators, both male and female. I also didn't buy Sam Humphrey's Harley Quinn. 
Uh, and Frank Terry's Harley Quinn also wasn't the greatest either. I think that's how many what I more lost. volumes is Green Lantern Corps going to be? I have the first one. Is oh no, this this, this, this is, is going to finish everything. This up. is it. Okay. Uh, that that's nice volume two. I the last one. I didn't know. Omar how, is yeah. not a man of his word. The scout. Oh my God! Fine. I gotta scroll all the way up here. <laughs> Jeez, between <laughs> you and freaking Jess, I swear to God, <laughs> I had nothing to do with this one. You encourage him. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> you mean what oh, he said? Okay. Way up the road. Use code Omnitalk. <laughs> one bird for two dollars off at a organic price books. Thank so, you. Can you imagine doing this? I want to remember this crap on Omnibros when you're right in the middle of your in stock trades uh, promo. Use code Omnidog. Shit it together. Five percent off. Oh, ship it together. The glasses <laughs> part. I was like, that is a weird code for five percent off four or more of your books. Surprise. I'm so glad my oh. wife's students are not watching this anymore. Uh, oh. There you go, brother Lono. OHC equals yes. DC, great job. Finally, using a black label instead of Vertigo imprint. Uh, DC, what is wrong with you? <laughs> oh. The DC. Are we sure vertical isn't a Jess alter? <laughs> Jess has like 55 accounts. I can't keep up with him. <laughs> so Omar's one of Jess's salesmen now. Where did it go wrong? I don't know, man. I guess everybody's got a buying price. <laughs> everybody's got a buying price. Uh oh my god, that would be a good promo code. Uh okay. <laughs> <laughs> <One day. laughs> that's too much to type though. Yeah, but that you put that code in and it makes your books cost more money. <laughs> That's messed up, Jake. Why would you say that? <laughs> uh, and this is the end of the catalog. Oh, bad girl. Heck yes. And Silver Age. <laughs> I love just pitch selling me on the Silver Age world's finest. You're like, ah. Uh. Yeah, oh, I'm not a good salesman on it. I'm not a good become... salesman. I'm gonna go all in on Silver Age oh, DC now as a jazz. The the world's <laughs> finest reprint, by the way, Omar. It does have a brand new introduction by Mark Wade. So if that is a kicker for you, ooh, oh, now I'm sold. This one here, Great. Mark Wade has yeah. There's a brand new introduction and some other stuff that Mark Wade fills in that he says, oh, use this for inspiration for the current run that he's writing, which I thought was ooh. Cool. oh, that's <laughs> really that's cool. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's the downfall of like, uh, you know, the, uh, having a YouTube channel and doing this for a living has its ups and downs. The downs are like, oh man, spending money on books that I'm going to end up giving away and having to do overviews of and having to stop reading what I'm currently reading to read these from time to time. Okay. Mark, wait, huh? I'll read the introduction and then I'll review the book. So let me break my down new, the Mark Wade introduction. <laughs> <laughs> my new life goal is to recreate that cover right there with Jess and Omar. So you two shaking hands and me looking at you guys as Robin. <laughs> we need more women. Get your three contacts to ignore you on that. Freddie, I, I can't help you with that, man. Get a better paying job. Get you a nice car. <laughs> um, trying to give you some tips here on life. Um uh, Spend it, man. Spend it like you, you got it, baby. Oh, you mean women creators? Yeah. <laughs> Where's this coming from? Okay, <laughs> that makes more sense. Oh, you thought? Sorry, it was not a DC ignorant. question, but Wolverine Omni Volume Five officially pushed to mid. Yes, it it has been mm -hmm. delayed. I did not get it with a batch of uh, April books, so it has been uh, delayed. Yes, yes. And you can that find is... that updated date on ComicReleases.com. I'm talking yeah. about creators, Omar. You. Done. You're gonna insult me on my own show? Wow! He's, and he's a mod. I know. So even if I block him, he can unblock himself. Wait, I want to be. Who's a mod gonna be on Batman the in the pick? Jess or Omar? And what pick? And this, I am not shaking Jess's hand. Not after that. <laughs> I didn't he, say anything. Elon's right in the middle. That, <laughs> Elon is is super chat. It's tampering. He's robbing. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a blast. Uh, thank you to my wonderful panel that had came together 
and decided to talk about books. And in all honesty, I hope you feel better, Jess. I hope you had some laughs and you're feeling better, buddy. I am. Remember. Thank you. I knew this would make me feel better. Moore doesn't like women. He didn't even invite one female DC fan to join his stream. Who? Off, off. Who? You? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I don't like women so much. I married one and had two little girls. That's exactly <laughs> how much I hate women. No Marvel talk, but Mantis is both Marvel and DC. Oh, that's right. That is true. That is true. Uh, gentlemen, where can people find you when you're not hanging out with me? I'll be back tonight, by the way, at 6.30 to do the X-Men Evergreen show, which I'm so it's excited to talk about. With some, what? I thought six it was 6. 6, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. Okay, you said 6.30. I don't know. I don't he just wants Jess to show up late. He's trying to. I'm a, you. I'm a size spurrier <laughs> script when it don't comes to. Don't fall for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dom, where can people find you when you're not hanging out with me? Uh, you can find me on my YouTube channel at Dom of X. Again, the same name. You can also find me on comicreleases.com where I do all of that hard work in for you folks and Dom of X Studio on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and all the things. And also wow. on this channel, as again, I am the project intern for Omar. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much for that. And to his right is this guy right here. Adorable Omnidog. You can find me on uh, Omnidog's Vault on YouTube, Omnidog's underscore vault on Instagram. And please join Omnidog's Discord where we have a lot of fun. And Bar, you need to answer uh, my most recent message to you. Answer it, Bar. And to my right is this guy named... <laughs> I'm Jake from the Brave and the Boys. You can find us on YouTube, Discord, uh, TikTok, all the places. Um, yeah, I just like to talk about comics. And now I want to be I want to be Omnidog's project intern. So I got to get some, you know, interview tips from Dom of X to secure the job well, of we, being we Omnidog's whole, project intern. We went intern. through a whole casting process. It's not easy. Uh, <laughs> Dude, why did I imagine you had the leather couch with the camera? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah. What is wrong with you, Jake? <laughs> you let me make those jokes. Uh, Sorry, that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I will be back at 6 uh, with a panel of X-Men lovers, if you will. And we are going to be choosing the top 10 X-Men Omnibus Evergreen. And you should join us for that. And that is live at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hit that oh, like yeah. button on the way out. Check out CheapGraphicNovels.com. They have books up to 50% off. So tell them the Urban Conditions sent you their way. And you get free shipping on your next order after your first one. Much love. I'm out of here. Hang on, Mark. You want to be one, too? You want? Oh, man, okay. What? You and, you and Dom can arm wrestle for, for this spot. <laughs> what I 